So guys what if Naruto was Eno temper movie lounging on the veranda tiles, against the wall shadowed by the eaves of a three-story building, 15-year-old Eno Yamanaka appeared to be doing nothing more sinister than killing time and enjoying shelter from the sun's heat, nose lightly twitching to enjoy the daisies in the flower box her head lay again, her gaze slowly wandered from one point to the next as if she watched the crowd far below only to keep from falling asleep. This appearance was a carefully planned deception, if anyone could actually see she was there. They might have noticed that the dark color of her clothes blended into the wall almost entirely, making her invisible to the casual observer. Likewise, the wooden flower box she currently used as a pillow meant her blonde hair and pale face were also camouflaged, combined with the gentle slope of the tiles underneath and her height, one would have to be an experienced Jonin or ludicrously alert to discern her presence. Her target was laughably far from the first, the youngest member of the Yamanaka clan also knew that her target, Uzumaki Naruto, was forever wandering into traps, he would never know she was there, which was probably for the best. Naruto was always playing pranks on other people, surely it was his turn to be on the receiving end, one simple application of her jutsu and she could cause all sorts of mayhem, she could make him single carols in the streets, she could have him romance the most inappropriate people, she could make him seem to enjoy sushi, despite his vehement objections to the sight of the stuff. She could make him do whatever she wanted, for she was Yamanaka Ino and she had the powerful Shintention no jutsu under her control. It was pretty simple, too. All she had to do was wait until he was eating his fill at Ichiraku Ramen, clueless to her presence. The blonde girl could then use her technique to take control of him, at least for a while. She planned to make him do quite a few embarrassing things and then shed release her jutsu, leaving the clueless Genin to deal with the consequences. Perhaps revenge is a dish best served cold, Ino agreed. Chocolate ice cream being a guilty pleasure she did her best to indulge only rarely, he deserved every bit of what she would do to him, she reflected, her thoughts turned as grim as the scowl on her face, even with that stupid crush of his, how dare he say that Sakura and her giant forehead were a million times prettier than her. How could anyone who knew her or indeed, anyone at all compare her hair to the color of his urine? Didn't he have any respect at all? This would not just be fully justified revenge, it would be righteously delivered heavenly punishment. Other boys had compared her to an angel often enough she felt justified in visiting this treatment on him, anybody who so thoroughly disparaged the appearance of any woman could expect nothing less. Noting that Naruto was not currently occupying one of Ichikaru Ramen's stools, Ino settled in for a bit of a wait. One could rely on the orange-clad youth to proclaim the inevitability of being a Hokage any time he thought it necessary, it was almost a certainty that he would go to outrageous lengths to prove himself to his comrades, ignoring the theoretical superiority of the most dangerous foes to find that minute grip on victory, to think that the blonde would ever eat anything over Ichikaru ramen unless he had no choice was as alien a thought as any his comrades had ever had. The silver-eyed girl smiled to herself, she could be patient. Ooh fresh from his training with Kakashi sensei, Naruto could only focus on the gnawing hunger in his empty stomach, despite the miasma of delicious scents attempting to pull him to the various stands from which they wafted, the youth resolutely continued to walk, only the best would do after such a hard day's work. Ichikaru ramen was his destination, no yakitori skewers, however tasty, could deflect his resolve, Naruto waved to Choji as his friend sat in one of the booths, he shook his head to turn down the offer of the seat across from the portly ninja. No okonomiyaki, however dense the toppings, could tempt him to commit culinary adultery, even the cute brunette behind the griddle's flirting comments, enhanced by a tight blue shirt and clinging black leggings, could not draw him from his path. Naruto couldn't help but grin as he saw the sign which heralded the end of his temptation-laden gauntlet and the beginning of edible nirvana, no other food could sat his hunger the way it was quelled by those tender noodles, were he stranded in the largest, most barren desert, the boy would take a bowl of the succulent broth over a glacier-cold oasis any day. Though it was already close to evening, Ichikaru ramen's stools were empty, the old man smiled as he waved a hand in greeting, his two new assistants now rushing back and forth in the limited space in a frenzy, both young men knew how many different things went into a Naruto special and dreaded the alarming decimation about to be visited on their ingredients. The young man's arrival also explained the absence of other customers, no other resident of Konoha ate at the restaurant when Naruto did and housing the Kiyubi caused none of this aversion, the fact that Naruto commanded the old man's attention and depleted nearly all of the ingredients meant that whenever the blonde was around, the service was much worse and the variety unusually limited. With an enthusiastic greeting for the grey-haired owner, the blue-eyed ninja sat down in his favorite stool at the center of the stand, his first bowl of the Naruto special was always the best, his palate was clear, his anticipation heightened by the span of time since had last ate the owner's edible opus. However, 
The orange-clad Genin never took the time to pause and appreciate that first bowl. The second was always just a fraction less sumptuous than the first, why wait when more was available? Had already slurped down his third bowl as Aruka sensei arrived, sliding onto the stool to Naruto's left and grinning. The Chunin teacher sat next to his favorite student ordering his own meal and taking a moment to ponder the incredible change in strength of the once-time worst student. Neither Aruka nor Naruto had a clue that the younger ninja was in social peril, the Chunin and Genin both failed to sense the blonde girl currently targeting the ramen binging youth. Uhi's posture was completely relaxed, head thrown back as he tilted his bowl to slurp the last dregs of broth in his bowl, his shoulders shook as Aruka turned his head to the young ninja, the blonde's booming laughter loud enough to reach the kunoichi where she lounged in concealment, whatever her former classmate said in reply wasn't loud enough to carry up to the girl, though Aruka's resulting laughter matched Naruto's for volume. For a moment, Ino hesitated, this moment of joy was one of those moments she imagined the boy treasured most, guilt nipped at the edges of her vengeance fueled determination as she felt a strange desire not to intrude, it was one thing to cause the boy some embarrassment. It would be terrible and cruel to steal a time of happiness from him, more than he deserved for his comments, she would find him again when Aruka wasn't around, when the joy in initiating her vengeance wouldn't be marred by the specter of guilt. Her decision to leave was quickly countermanded by a flood of anger which washed away guilt as Naruto made a fist at the back of his head and pulled it back, as if indicating a ponytail. The fuming girl distinctly heard the boy say, P, in between bouts of chuckling, her conscience was ignored as her hands flashed in a series of seals, ending with fingers contorting to form a heart. Ino grimly smiled as she watched Naruto through her fingers, it would begin with a visit to Tamari, staying at the guest lodge, that would draw the ire of both the girl's brothers and Shikamaru as well then a couple visits to places the boy had sworn had never eat, perhaps even a prank on Sakura. The cute blonde boy would learn, very soon, not to mess with a Yamanaka. Shintenshin no Jutsu, she whispered, feeling the numbness hit her body as her spirit vacated, chakra fused with the separation of her consciousness to form a wild rush through the air as she bore directly into Naruto's body, hitting with no more force than a slight tap, she felt the familiar tingle in foreign extremities as Naruto's body became her puppet. Then the feeling changed, a force slammed into her from all directions, an unstoppable avalanche, blanking all thought, control over the boy's body was ripped from her in the same moment, she felt herself falling. Hitting the ground in a smooth crouch, she found herself looking through large steel bars at a room built of rusted metal sheets crudely fastened to an unseen structure, ice-cold water deep enough to chill her calves flooded the floor, making the echoing plip of dripping water much louder than it might have been otherwise, the only exit seemed to be a darkened hallway on the other side of the room, just through the bars. What the hell? Well, it looks like I get to eat now, too, a voice murmured from behind her, so loud and deep she felt the vibrations deep in her chest, Eno turned to see large eyes, red irises dancing wildly, a great deal of teeth then emerged from the darkness in a smile, each as large as she was, she realized she was in this thing's cage, and that the great steel bars were the prison. Her stomach dropped. She was on the wrong side, a virgin, too, the great being roared, a snuffling sound emerging from the darkness, the inky black hiding the teeth widened into a smile, showing that what she thought had been a large mouth was small compared to the reality, ill have to thank the brat. Ino tried to release her jutsu as those teeth opened. Even as she raised her hands to form the seal, Ino knew she was far too slow. U both ninja eating at Ichikaru ramen paused, eyes dropping to orange-clad belly as a deep purring rumbled suddenly from Naruto's stomach. Hey, Naruto, Aruka queried after a moment gesturing to Naruto's midsection with his chopsticks, are you all right? I must still be hungry, Naruto shrugged, shoving the strange noise from his mind, ramen needed eating, the blue-eyed genin handed his empty bowl to the smiling old man, already reaching for another bowl, another special, please. Neither the fifteen-year-old or his former teacher noticed the soulless body sitting on the roof behind them as it jolted once, struck by some invisible force, the involuntary shift altered the girl's balance, slowly tipping her torso forward, the angle was steep enough that as her torso hit the roof chest first, her weight was enough for her to slip from her perch, limply bouncing off of a sign before landing in a dumpster with a dull thud. Ooh in the village of Konoha, one of the first lessons potential ninja learned at the academy, drilled into each and every student from the start, was the need to fight panic and take a half second to assess the situation before acting. This lesson had proven its worth many times, giving Konoha ninja an edge some foes never notice until they found themselves defeated. Ino was not prone to panic, having learned just how powerful she could become if she remained calm, the girl had seen careful consideration allow Shikamaru and her team to prevail over theoretically superior foes, 
Their three-man team nearly fought two members of Akatsuki to a standstill, a feat few other ninja in the world could boast, let alone one Chunin fighting and defeating a member of Akatsuki in one-on-one -on -one combat. When the nine-tailed Kitsune it lunged forward she paused for a fraction of a section to consider how to best avoid the terrible jaws that reflexive prudence, for the first time, nearly cost her her life. Only the uncontrollable, terror-inspired twitch of her calves edged her back enough for those terrible jaws to miss, the deep clack of the mist bite washing a chill from the back of her neck right down to her feet, her mind recognized the need to move, before the demon realized Shed avoided the lunge. Her need to escape overcame revulsion. The blonde girl pressed both hands against the saliva-drenched white wall in front of her. Arching her back and windmilling arms to plant her hands in the water, abdominal muscles strained and hips protested as she tucked her legs in tight to avoid clipping the furred jaw just inches away, the flexible chunin bent her arms to lower her face almost into the water, then flooded biceps with chakra as she kicked her feet forward, towards a gap between the bars. As her arms tilted her away from the fox, she straightened them as powerfully as she could, a spring pressed down suddenly free to expand, Eno prayed she would pass through the bars, knowing if she hit one of those iron pillars she was dead, her eyes remained on the kitsune, terrible jaws opening and lunging forward again. The pain that slapped the blue-eyed youth was overshadowed by heart-gripping terror as her back slammed into unyielding metal, an inch or two to the right of her spine, an instant stretched to an hour as memories filled her thoughts too fast to understand, relief came as the instant passed into the next, momentum rolling her around the bar and through the gap to the other side. Stumbling backwards, Eno heard the sweetest music, the cacophony of bone on iron as the bars held back the monster's jaws. What the hell? Eno began, stopping as she realized her normally lightly teasing voice resembled the squeak of a mouse instead of clearly enunciated words, she cleared her throat, rubbing the base of her long neck to push down the lump she felt. Another meal wasted, the voice growled before she could attempt her question once more, chuckling as those horribly large teeth smiled in her direction, you can't escape though. Yamanaka, eventually you'll try to get past me, there's no exit down that hallway. How do you know who I am? Ino wondered, curiosity dominating her wildly churning mood. Whatever was happening, whatever it was, she was going to beat the living shit out of Naruto whenever she managed to get out of this mess. Oh, I know of your clan at least, one of yours tried to use that silly little technique on me as well, but there weren't any bars in the way, she was quite tasty, the voice chuckled darkly, realization Ino slapped Ino in the face. Her aunt Arisa died fighting the nine-tailed Kitsune all those years ago, she never even got to meet her only seen her pictures, the demon fox's smile widened in his cage as her eyes widened and her jaw dropped. Eno's took a step back out of reflex, she was face to face with the monster which nearly destroyed Konoha, the world-shaking beast the fourth Hokage his life to defeat. Boo! The demon added, grin fading as it realized Eno's attention had wandered. The present was rudely shoved aside as the events from minutes ago fought their way back to the front of the blonde girl's mind, throwing a solid right cross to her sensibilities, her jaw hung slack and her eyes lost focus as she connected the dots between the two wildly improbable events she now faced, she was talking with one of the most powerful creatures in the world in Naruto's head. It was a moment of terrible clarity which explained the universal aversion to the orphan the entire village displayed. Her own parents had told her to keep away from the solitary child when Shed first started her lessons at the academy, as young as Shed been when Shed heard the stern warning, she never once thought to ask the why, blindly trusting their judgment. The revelation explained the boy's dozens of idiosyncrasies, now it was clear how he could keep molding chakra during lessons long after his peers had given up in frustration, their own reserves as dry as the dunes of the sand country, his savant like skill in using the most high classed, chakra intensive jutsu now made a terrible kind of sense. It had to be because he somehow could access some of the huge amount of chakra she could feel. Now that she had calmed down, she could feel that terrible force of chakra from behind those bars, even killing intent didn't compare to it. This is Naruto's mind. Ino whispered in disbelief, taking in the rusted metal of the young man's mind, no wonder she hadn't recognized the feel of a person's thoughts in this dark, terribly desolate place, most people visualized their own minds in abstractions that were generally more, peaceful. This had the homey feeling of an abandoned bunker, not like a cottage in the meadow or the beautiful palace which comprised the typical image of a person's mind. Not totally stupid, but not all that smart either, the fox grumbled, its claws again reaching forward to try to grasp the frightened girl through the metal bars which formed its seal, they dug into the ground, creating an earthquake as the fox dragged them back within the seal, of course you're in his mind, you used that technique of yours, didn't you? This is just an abstraction of his mind which your tiny mortal brain can comprehend. Are you sure you don't want me to eat you? I might be doing you a favor. No, 
You can't eat me. Ino roared, irritation finally overcoming her initial fear of the rumbling beast. A shuriken from her belt pouch was hurled through the bars, though the eyes didn't even blink. Her mind was racing as she considered her options. How the hell was she going to get out of this? She glanced back down the hallway, considering it. The kitsune said there was no escape, perhaps he was lying. I wouldn't, the monster fox taunted, the chuckling somehow more sinister than any sound Shed ever heard. The great monster's voice dripped dark enjoyment. The only thing you'll find down that corridor are his memories. There has to be a way out, Eno muttered to herself. Unable to deny the urge to see what made the blonde genin tick, Shed been fairly dismissive of Sakura's teammate until recently. Then the boy fought a member of Akatsuki with nothing more than his guts, his chakra, and a desire to prove his worth against a ludicrously dangerous foe, choosing to do so alone instead of with the aid of one of the most experienced ninja in Konoha. Plus there had been that recentrican thing he has, that had been the most impressive jutsu she had ever seen. Shikamaru had entered the fight with a plan and an unflinching desire for revenge driving him. What arrogant pride made the blonde boy take on one of the most dangerous ninja in the world just to measure his own strength. He hadn't known Asuma especially well, couldn't have had any strong hatred for Kakazu or his partner, nothing save the Mons association with Akatsuki and his trespasses against fellow academy students who hadn't been especially close made him the blonde boy's foe. Enos felt a desire to walk down the hall and the careful stare she directed down the darkened corridor. There were so many questions she had about him, so many mysteries and she was always too curious about people. Eno's curiosity could no longer be denied, Shed hadn't really had any contact with Naruto before graduation, except for the casual association granted by their classes together, after she and Sakura had come to terms with their rivalry, after that first Chunin exam, Shed occasionally listened to the pink-headed girls' stories, but, well, she always embellished the stories of her own missions with Shikamaru and Choji, it was just that they were really boring, unless she added a few more ninja, each using a few more jutsu than they actually had, talking about yet another ambush, the majority of their foes decimated by Choji's powerful taijutsu while Shikamaru held them immobile would have quickly grown stale, even the occasionally quick or cautious foe who escaped was easy prey for her jutsu. She listened to Sakura's own tales under the assumption that the green-eyed girl was adding the same sort of embellishment, the recent understanding Shed gained threw her teammate into a whole new light, knowing every word her friend spoke was the simple truth, if not actually understated. She struggled to resolve the class prankster with the sort of ninja who didn't hesitate for a second to go toe to toe with one of the Sanin for a girl who ignored him and a boy who belittled him. All within months of graduation, the sort of boy who could come up with a plan to free his Junin sensei and allow his team to prevail when, by all rights, they should have been easy pickings for Zabuza's Mizu Bunshins, the sort of young man who would travel non stop to another country to fight a member of Akatsuki to save the life of a young man who tried to kill him. The chance she had was too unique to pass up. Her feet were slipping through the cold water before she admitted to herself she wanted to know more about the orange clad genin. Butterflies churned her stomach as she advanced down the hallway, the inky blackness was frightening enough, and only the cackling of the amused fox allowed her to walk on. Spite trumping anxiety, she paused before the first iron door she saw, massive hinges crudely bolted to a frame assembled from scraps of girders, a ring hanging on one side of the door rustily protested being disturbed as she grasped it, pulling the door open with a squeal. A flood of memories struck her, a solid haymaker to the gut buckling her knees, her mind reeled, a discordant bouquet of emotions warring for dominance, anger, hurt, apathy so thick Eno's respect for the boy rose, just for the willpower it would have taken to cast it aside. As her mind struggled, her vision tumbled through a rainstorm of color, then. Naruto's eighth birthday, staring at the wall in a shabby, ill-kept apartment, she shifted only slightly, and then just to offset the gradual ache ever building from sitting on a lumpy bed, the bed's only companion was a rusted metal dinner tray, decorated with three empty styrofoam cups, Eno was unable to flinch at the way the boy ignored the itch of wet skin from tears he was too detached to wipe away. A lone visitor taking him to Ichiraku Ramen for a treat, giving the boy a small cupcake and some words of encouragement, it was a glorious sunrise by comparison, the blonde girl wondered if Aruka would ever realize just how much those thirty short minutes meant to the orphaned boy that day. Eno stumbled back from the door, hand recoiling from iron ring as if it was a hot pan, wanting nothing more than to forget the raw hatred the young eight-year-old boy had possessed, Aruka sensei's visit was the only pause in a silent contemplation of rage, even now she felt tainted by it, angry with everything around her just from that one memory. Shed known this much hate only for the pair who'd killed her sensei, to feel it for everything but one person, even peripherally, it staggered her, how could someone walk around with so much hatred bottled up within themselves? 
the stark contrast with the smiling boy she knew Naruto to be only made the memory that much more repulsive. She wanted to conjure a lock and seal away the memory forever, make sure it would never haunt her or its owner again, it was too painful to bear, even as a spectator. She found another door and in this she saw a familiar image as it was open, this of Gara, only perspective gained from the sight of his furtive, shy smiles whenever he and his siblings had reason to visit softened the hard memories from years ago, Ino still had nightmares of the vacant-eyed youth from her first chunin exam. The first of Naruto's memories was already an ugly scar she could never erase from her mind, she saw the how Naruto had met Gara, then of the realization that he and Gara were two sides of the same coin, the fight with Gara was incredible, she had heard of it but to actually see it was another thing, but it were those thoughts that ran through his mind at that time, the images of the darkness of his life that he spoke of and the painful ache she could feel associated with it. Morbid fascination pulled Eno deeper down the iron hallway, searching darkened patches of rust for the next memory, even the hallway filled the hollow of the girl's neck with a lump. Naruto's mind was the long-abandoned ruin caused by an epic struggle. She grasped the ring on the second door, opening the memory with a firm, determined yank, even braced for it, she couldn't stop the tears. Ooh Naruto breathed a sigh of contentment as he stretched out on his bed, staring up at his ceiling as he let the warmth from the bowls of ramen spread out from his stomach, until even his fingers and toes tingled, dreams crept around the edges of conscious thought, waiting for him to lower his guard so they could slip to the front of his mind. Sure, head pissed off Ino, he mused, had also messed up at asking Sakura on a date and had to put up with Sei, curiosity about the sexy no jutsu, then again, had also gotten the chance to tell Aruka about kicking Kazaka's ass, which resulted in his teacher paying for his first three bowls of Ichikaru. Any day he got treated to Ichikaru, he concluded, was a good day. He drifted blissfully into sleep, pulling his black sleeping cap more snugly onto his head as he curled up underneath the blankets. He found himself drifting between stray thoughts, and then with an abruptness he thought out of place, he was vividly dreaming. He knew he was dreaming because Eno was crying, not only that, but he was in front of the stupid fox's cage in his boxers, all the party needed was an older teacher type spouting strange, inscrutable advice to convince him to never again eat crab ramen before bedtime again. What the hell? Naruto muttered, scuffing his bare foot on the water as he cast his eyes around, being a dream, he was wearing the same clothes had been wearing when had fallen asleep, his hat, his boxers, and the blonde hair his father, our mother, had given him, he prodded the blonde girl on the shoulder, oi, what's going on? Naruto. I am sorry, as the tall blonde girl tackled him. Naruto knew without a doubt he was dreaming, a small part of him insisted it was real but the various soft parts brushing against him convinced the blue-eyed Hokage to be that this was fiction from his subconscious. No way. No how was he this lucky with any girl, let alone Sakura's rival of all people. As if reading his thoughts, the fox chuckled as it watched him, Ino paused, sniffling as glistening grey eyes met blue, I should have been nicer. I didn't know. Err, it's okay. Naruto tried, without much success, he gingerly patted the girl on the back, Torn between the twin urges to throw his arms around and give her a firm hug and trying to crawl away, this dream was getting really weird, normally his dreams were only sort of strange, hell, if the blonde was a pinkette and he wasn't being watched by the creepy fox, it would have resembled one of his normal dreams. He shrugged, what the hell, it was just a dream, he hugged Eno, patting her on the head, don't cry, Eno, nothing's worth getting this upset over. Always cheerful, just like Aruka taught you, Eno sniffled, pulling back and looking up at Naruto with the softest grey eyes had ever seen on the girl, that pretty much settled it for him. Nobody knew about his conversations with Aruka, not even Sakura or Sasuke, and the thought of soft or kind being used in the same sentence with Yamanaka Eno, especially in regards to him? It had to be a dream, Naruto. I've been really mean to you, do you forgive me? Of course. Naruto promised, thinking that this dream wasn't so bad after all. Now that he had a moment to consider it without being yelled at, Sakura's rival was fairly pretty in her own way, he recalled the way both girls had fawned over Sasuke and figured it was something with his subconscious mind trying to overcome Sasuke in every way possible, he resolved to give his subconscious mind a kick in the ass and anywhere else he could reach at the next opportunity, don't worry about it, Eno, it'll even treat you nicer after this dream is over. Dream? Eno seemed to scowl for a moment and then she smiled, the devious look on her face gave Naruto pause, though rational thought fled as the girl, still hugging him tightly, took a deep breath, yeah, this dream. When this dream is over, I might even treat you nicer, too. This is my dream, not yours, Naruto groused, finally letting her go and taking a look around, it didn't feel like a normal dream, either, he grinned at her, 
It's not like you're going to even know about any of this when I wake up, you're just a figment of my imagination. Well, I want out, Ino admitted, her head bowing forward as she sidled up to Naruto, he blushed as he felt, parts, brushing against his bare chest, she latched onto his arm, but it looks like the only way I can get out is if that monster fox lets me, make him let me go, will you? Sure. Naruto promised, it was just a dream, after all, he marched right up to the bars of the cage, poking his finger into the darkness, oi, stupid fox, let Ino go so I can get back to sleep. Make me, the fox growled, annoyed, it didn't need this, nations cowered at its feet and some upstart punk was always giving it orders. Naruto grinned, Rasengan. Naruto roared, feeling the familiar drain on his chakra, funny, he didn't usually feel a drain when he performed jutsus in his dreams, then again, this dream was kind of weird anyway, he held the jutsu swirling in his hand in front of himself, don't make me come in there. The nine-tailed kitsune frowned at the swirling mass of chakra, it couldn't hurt him after all this was just an image of his mind, but if they did fight and if he accidentally killed his jailer, and that was a possibility, that wouldn't be good because then he would die. Of course, the idiot thought it was all a dream, he thought he was just being the typical hero without knowing just how close to death he was coming, then again, with how close the moron trotted to death every time he gleefully threw himself into battle, the idiot's danger sense was probably as well balanced as a vase in an earthquake. The fox relented, pulling back his chakra and allowing the Yamanaka to release the seal from where she stood, without the demonic pull of his chakra, she was able to release the technique with ease, the stupid blonde who was his jailer wasn't even competent enough to realize as the girl faded from his mind, her soul dispersing through the air to return to her body. Naruto grinned as he allowed the technique to dissipate, it had been a weird dream. Right now it didn't matter because he wanted to swim in a lake of ramen. Ueno breathed a breath of air. Writhing as she felt herself once more in her own body, she was free. Shed escaped the nine-tailed kitsune. She was once more back in her own body. She was alive. She Eno sniffed, realizing she smelt like garbage. Pulling herself from the dumpster, Eno smiled as she thought of a blonde boy. Shed misjudged him. Shed thought he was nothing more than a loser, a failure not worthy of her attention, just looking through his memories Shed seen fights that had left a lasting impression on her. A small part of her shuddered at the reckless courage it would take to fight Orochimaru not once, but twice, both times knowing full well he might die, when Ninja dared talk about Orochimaru to her generation it was in a whisper, as if the mention of his name would bring him back, that Naruto would charge into battle with him for the sake of his comrades, when even Junin would run, was a resolute monument to his character. The blonde boy was a ninja worth watching, thinking of her sensei's last words to her, she grinned, Sakura might not know the prize she had following in her footsteps, but Ino would claim it, she wouldn't lose to Sakura in love, not when the prize was so worth catching. Not when the prize would be the next Hokage, Ino awoke to a fresh new day, stretching as she got out of bed and banished the last bits of sleep from her thoughts, her mind, normally focused on her plans for the day, wandered aimlessly as she went through her morning routine brushing her hair and putting on the earrings Asuma sensei had given her for making chunin rank. As she slipped into her day clothes, she resolved to right a wrong shed been unconsciously committing since the early days of the academy. Ino was not one to admit she was wrong, not often, at least not in her mind, the few times that she admitted to being wrong, it was either in battle or inconsequential, in battle if you were wrong you had moments to correct it or you were dead, admitting you'd messed up just wasted time so Shed spent those moments correcting her error and wrestling victory from her foes. To think Shed misjudged someone, not just someone Shed known briefly, but someone she had known, in theory, for years, it was just galling. For the longest time, Shed thought there were only a few people who'd qualified as dating material from the pool of ninja in her age group. Among those few, none had been available. Sasuke had been too distant and emotionally detached no matter how hard she had tried with him before he left. During those years Naruto had been gone, she once approached Neji, after all he wasn't as bad as Sasuke and was just as good looking, but he had proven to be too cool of an individual plus she had a theory that Tenten had her eyes on him, not interested in getting between that she moved on, even Sakura's new teammate Sai, while nice enough and thoroughly cute, ultimately proved himself a little too weird for her tastes as she got to know him. For the longest time Shed despaired of ever finding good boyfriend material. When her desperation had caused her eyes to turn briefly to her own teammates, Tamari had very subtly bared her teeth and made her claim on Shikamaru quite clear when she tried something with the Suna ninja had been with Shikamaru, even if the Nara heir didn't realize it yet, he was as good as married, it was only a matter of time before the blonde sand Kunoichi sprung her trap, and she was nearly as devious as the lazy boy himself. Choji was, well, Choji, 
Too much the little brother, Shed set him up with enough of her friends that dating him would have felt weird, not to mention that he was a little too meaty for her tastes. Of course Shed dismissed Naruto, practically from the moment Shed met him, to be fair she was just one of the many girls who had, throughout the entire course of the academy Naruto had been the worst student, overall, had only ever been a touch better than adequate at taijutsu and ninja tool use and was dead last in ninjutsu, genjutsu, and a multitude of written work, he was the class clown, spending more time and effort on jokes than on his schoolwork. Even Sakura, the young Mon's teammate, had dismissed him for the longest time, Ino couldn't recall Sakura mentioning the boy with praise without adding how far behind Sasuke he stood, even after his two and a half year absence, Sakura's praise for the blonde boy was sparsely given, though it had become qualified by circumstance less and less with each day. Then again, Ino had learned a lot from her brief jaunt through his mind, though many memories were too old or too fractured to get more than a brief impression of the events and others were hazy visions seen through dense fog, Shed seen everything from the boy's own eyes, unembellished by his ego or underplayed by his teammates. Seeing was enough, she was impressed, beyond impressed even. Although it was widely known that Naruto had been the one to beat Gara, She had actually seen what had happened, it disproved a popular theory about what she had thought had happened when Sasuke had chased the Sand Nin from the stadium, as she thought how it happened, Sasuke had chased Gara and his siblings from the stadium, Naruto, Shikamaru, and Sakura followed a support, during which Shikamaru dropped back to foil the pursuit, when Naruto and Sakura caught up, they neutralized Gara's sister while she thought that Sasuke had played a much bigger part. That was what she had believed, it was the only explanation that made any sense at the time, then Shed seen Naruto save Sasuke and Sakura from death at the hands of the Sand Ninja and match the terribly powerful youth blow for blow, even seeing it from the blonde's eyes she was hard pressed to resolve the resolute youth with the Naruto she knew. Any time Shed seen Naruto create hundreds shadow clones it sent a shiver through her at the thought of the chakra expenditure it would take. Shed experimented with the shadow clones once and trying to create a few dozen had given her a whole new respect for Naruto, even years ago, that his fight with Neji was the gentle foothills and not the sky obscuring peak of his ability was mind boggling, her limit was perhaps a dozen. Beyond that, her clones would lack the chakra to move, let alone fight effectively. Then there were his more fantastical fights, the ones Sakura had never even hinted at, the ones he had never boasted of himself, his fights with Orochimaru, with Kabuto, with other foes she would have been frightened to consider fighting with her team at her side, never mind alone, she was sure that if she lived to serve Konoha for another century, she would not face half as many desperate battles as the blonde boy had already seen. The thought that Tsunade of all people had been forced to rely on Naruto to protect her, however briefly, was supremely shocking, the Hokage was supposed to be an infallibly strong ninja, an example for all other ninja in the village to use as a model for improvement, the Hokage wasn't supposed to be a terrified woman relying on a genin to protect her, it went a long way towards explaining the fifth Hokage's unwavering confidence in the young man. She had even seen the second fight with Orochimaru on the bridge, although she hadn't seen all of it as pieces were missing, the length he went to made her worry about him, he was willing to go to those lengths to fulfill a promise he made years ago, even going after Gara's body just to even get it back from that blonde guy with the explosive clay, she knew now why Naruto felt such a strong bond with Gara as well. She could finally admit to herself that Shed misjudged the boy very badly. Having dismissed Naruto before, Shed missed the signs which were so obvious to her, now, she was astonished she could have missed them, as loud and obvious as they were. He exuded a warm confidence Shed dismissed as brash arrogance, she had never before considered that his firm belief in his ability to defeat almost any foe could be a genuine belief, after a myriad of fights scattered across dozens of countries, it was a chilling realization to find that the only time the blonde ninja had ever backed down from any ninja was for the safety of his comrades, not himself. Shed thought he was just trying to fit in by saying that had fight for those he believed in. She hadn't believed that anyone could have such a big heart. Shed thought the orange-clad genin knew Hanada far better than he actually did, for all his passion in confronting Neji during that eventful first Chunin exam, that his standing up for her and fighting Neji because of what the boy had done just because Naruto thought it was wrong. He apparently had no idea of Hanada's crush on the boy, Ino had seen it and knew it for what it was, it was too bad the girl had always been too shy. It was a mistake that Ino wouldn't make, she wouldn't pass up the chance. Now she knew, having seen just how eager he was to put a will of fire behind his often dismissed promises of friendship. She knew that if it came down to standing between an army and a friend, Naruto would stand in front of that army with a cocky grin, he would do so without giving the matter a second thought, or even a first one he would charge into that army with nothing more than a disbelief that anyone would have the brazen temerity to actually stand in his way, as if their defeat was a certainty. 
She started to see him in a new light now, on the inside he was warm, had the biggest heart in the world, sure he had faults but looking at them now, she found them somewhat cute, plus he had grown up in this time away, he was taller than her now, plus with all the baby fat gone he looked so much more handsome now, her mind made up, it was time to get things into action. She slipped into the kitchen, returning her father's grin with one of her own as she opened the door separating her mother's shop from the family home, her mother's raised eyebrow was studiously ignored as Eno grabbed three specific blooms and slipped outside. She had new prey to catch, U Eno's first order of business was her rival, Sakura. She was almost willing to pursue Naruto regardless of their friendship, given what Shed learned during the eventful evening Shed had just last night, she was honest enough with herself to admit Shed much preferred to clear things with the girl first and find out where the pink-haired girl stood with the blonde Genin, if they were just friends, so much the better. Losing Sakura once had been painful enough, she didn't want to repeat mistakes of the past. That haunting fear was the reason Ino found herself drifting into the Konoha hospital. While she was a fully trained medic nin, she was by no means on the same level as the pinkette she was searching for, Ino had only passed the basic courses not the more advanced ones, she was adequate as a medical ninja, good enough to heal wounds in the middle of combat, she was not good enough to warrant pulling duty at the hospital while not on a mission. Passing half exhausted medics as she wound through the halls. Ino mused that perhaps, mastery of a skill wasn't everything. Every medic nin she passed seemed to have become trapped by their skill. Their time for practice of taijutsu or other ninjutsu seemed to wane as the demands on their skill in healing increased, turning what was once merely a specialty into the exclusive use of their talents. Then again, Sakura was the exception as her physical combat skills were above hers in ways she couldn't hope to get close to. She sighed at that point, she remembered when she used to be stronger, then they tied at the Chunin exams, now Sakura seemed to be getting farther and farther ahead of her, sure Ino could have trained more, it was her own fault but now she made a note not to fall any further behind, starting with her love life and going on from there. It didn't take her long to find her friend, eyes closed in uncharacteristic serenity as she paused for a brief moment over tea in the break room in between checking on her patients, her green eyes opened as Ino stepped lightly into the room. Ino. Sakura was surprised, Ino noted, and with good reason, Ino rarely showed up at the hospital to visit, preferring to see Sakura during her off hours. Hi, Sakura, Ino said, pouring herself some tea from the staff kettle, she sat down on a nearby bench, suddenly nervous as she searched for words, while this was Sakura of all people, Ino knew that bubblegum-haired girl held a definite advantage with Naruto, not only was she the girl Naruto had been crushing on for the last four years, but she was his teammate, Shed been there for him during the roughest of times, shared in some of his most desperate battles. This was a girl Naruto had fought earth-shaking battles for, the girl Naruto for whom had faced Orochimaru without a trace of hesitation, a girl who could have the blonde boy's heart for nothing more than the effort of voicing the request, for a moment she wavered in thinking she might have a chance but it soon passed, she wouldn't run from any challenge anymore. What's up, Ino? Sakura finally asked, seeming to grow impatient, Ino remembered the girl was on duty. The break Ino was interrupting was probably scheduled to end in a handful of minutes. I had an encounter with Naruto yesterday, Ino finally said, tossing aside her worries plunging forward, while she didn't want to spill everything to her friend, she needed to at least get onto the topic quickly, has he always been so, open? Naruto. Sakura asked, blinking, she idly sipped her tea as she thought, well, I suppose he has, it's kind of hard to take him seriously sometimes, but he's consistent, steady, he's childish a lot of the time but he always pulls through in the end. So you trust him? Ino pushed, wanting to know more, she didn't want to tip her hand, and was thankful Sakura was too distracted by the questions to push deeper into Ino's motives. Of course, he's my best male friend after all, Sakura finally answered, and Ino breathed an inner sigh of relief, male friend that was not someone you dated, she was in the clear, at least for now, Sakura grinned to herself, giving Ino the impression she was being ignored as those green eyes wandered somewhere distant, adding, but then sometimes he seems so strong, so sure of himself, other times, he's almost fragile. Sakura frowned a bit remembering how she had learned his terrible secret, how he contained the nine tails after that battle on the bridge, to see him all burned up like that had been horrible, he didn't remember hurting her and she would never tell him that, she hadn't talked with Naruto about that day, she wanted him to come to her when he was ready. Then as she thought about him more other things came to Sakura's mind, and when he needs to be, he's, well, I guess you could say that his fight with Kakazu was just another day, he keeps surprising me all the time with how strong he becomes, and he has matured more than when he was little, at least a bit more. I see, Ino paused, now unsure, Sakura's words weren't quite the words she would have been using if she just thought of Naruto as a teammate and a friend, 
Sakura was sending two very different messages, if she was thinking of the blonde boy as more than a just a friend. Damn, I've got to go, Eno, Sakura muttered as she glanced at the clock, finishing the rest of her tea in quick gulp and standing, she glanced back at Eno, look, I'll talk to you later, okay? Sure, Eno said, standing and finishing her own tea as well, Sakura might welcome her presence, but she doubted the medical staff wanted her hanging around, she left the hospital, two different sections of her mind at war, now, she shook it off, it might not even matter in the first place. She had to go see the blonde boy, she would make things clear, even if his heart was Sakura's for the taking, perhaps he wasn't willing to wait for the girl to clear the sand from her eyes and realize just what she had in her grasp. U Naruto grimaced, sweat beating on his brow, he had to make a choice. Pink was his favorite and had been for a number of years, truly, the love of his life, but that golden yellow was so inviting, so tempting, he was torn, did he maintain his faith to his love or give in to the golden temptation that stood right in front of him? Pink or golden yellow? How could someone even make that choice? It was absurd to think he had to choose, had simply have both, that would solve his dilemma quite easily, he would start with the pink and then the golden yellow would finish him off, that would solve things best for all involved, he could keep his faith and try the tempting new vision, now flipping his perception and inverting his sensibilities. So decided, Naruto tore open the seal on both the pink and yellow ramen package as he prepared his breakfast, beef would taste better with chicken, anyway and he usually ate more ramen than most people anyway. Naruto patted his stomach after he had finished his meal, he leaned back at his dining room table, completely stuffed thanks to the double serving of ramen, he cocked his head as a chill ran down his spine, as if he were being hunted, the blonde usually trusted his instincts, so he decided he'd leave early to train. He had a promise to keep, and nothing to be gained by lounging around his home, perhaps it wouldn't hurt to start his trek early, scout out the venue for the upcoming match and confirm that there were no hidden surprises. It couldn't hurt. Ueno tracked her prey to training ground 8 and paused as she saw Naruto standing across the field from Neji, a determined look on both their faces, they didn't smile, didn't joke. The Hyuga simply dropped into his gentle fist stance as Naruto charged with a loud cry, closing the distance to throw punches and kicks with the reckless taijutsu that was the orange-clad Yu's trademark. Ino watched in mute horror, powerless to stop the fight as it ramped up, Naruto used his cage bunchens to throw the Jonin off guard as the duo attempted to pummel one another other, vicious scowls on their faces as they ripped into one another with a frenzy Ino hadn't seen since the two boys had clashed in the Chunin exam three years ago. Deadly chakra flashed and puffs of smoke exploded as the clones swarming Neji burst in a cloud of wasted chakra, though clearly doing noticeable damage to his foe's chakra reserves, the Hyuga boy was being forced back as Naruto and his remaining clones pressed the advantage. Two Naruto's dropped low to the ground, kicking their legs out to rob Neji of his footing as a third Naruto slugged the long-haired Jonin with a solid right cross which elicited a grunt of pain, that quickly transformed into a smirk of victory as one of the white-eyed boy's legs touched the ground allowing him to torque his body into a deadly spin of released chakra. Katen, the ultimate defensive technique of the Hyuga clan. Naruto tumbled through the air, twisting and landing on his feet as his less fortunate clones hit the dirt and exploded from the impact, the blonde grinned as he formed a seal, summoning more clones to his aid. Clones, clones, is that all you're capable of, Naruto? Neji taunted, plucking a pair of kanai from his ninja tool pouch and hurling them towards the small army amassed in front of him, he was unsurprised to see his two targets vanish in a puff of smoke. Who needs more to deal with you? All of the Naruto's demanded at once, an identical grin coming to their faces at exactly the same time, the closest blonde pointed one finger at his foe, I didn't need to use anything else to beat you, before. Arrogant, Neji muttered, charging into the mass of clones with a grin. Ino sat in the tree, trying not to blink as the two ninja, Jenin and Jonin, clashed, neither seemed capable of gaining a significant advantage, Neji was able to nullify the most devastating of Naruto's attacks, while the blonde ninja seemed to possess the superhuman ability to replace lost clones at whim, ignoring the potentially crippling chakra cost without a heavy breath. It was a deadly balance, Ino watched in horror as blood sprayed from Naruto's back, followed by Neji's hand as it pierced the boy's body, sheer force had killed Naruto over and over again, before the body would inevitably puff into smoke and Ino could breathe a brief sigh of relief. The battle had been going on and on in this fashion for nearly 40 minutes. There was only one Naruto left, Neji closed, readying his hand, Naruto fought valiantly, twisting and turning out of the way, attempting his own counter blow against his Jonin foe, none of Naruto's blows found their mark, but Neji struck true with a sharp blow which cleanly caught Naruto's throat, causing the young blonde to drop to his knees and cough as he vomited blood. 
Neji had killed Naruto. As Ino prepared to use her own jutsu to capture Neji, Naruto poofed out of existence as the sound of clapping filled the clearing. Neji smiled and turned to the source of the clapping as Naruto dropped from a nearby tree branch. Good job, Neji. You managed to kill 500 clones in under an hour. Naruto's voice was jovial, and he wore a broad grin as he walked over towards his friend. Naruto. Only you would call that an accomplishment, Neji grinned, shaking the younger Mon's hand. He shook his head. I seem to recall defeating dozens of your shadow clones in under a minute during the Chunin exam. Yeah, yeah. So why did you need my help training anyway? Isn't that what Lee and Tenten are for? Naruto asked, scratching his chin. Well, I can't use the gentle fist on them, idiot, not like I can against you, you're the only ninja I know with enough chakra to pose a good challenge after using cage bunchens, Neji smiled, cocking his head, I think it's time I go now, though, I think Ino wants to talk to you. Ino started, surprised at being detected, then she remembered the Hyuga family's bloodline limit let them see nearly everything around them and also remembered that Neji had a ridiculously large range for his, had probably been keeping an eye on her since the fight started, she hopped down from the tree branch where Shed thought she was concealed and walked into the clearing. Take care, Neji, Naruto said, clapping the janin on the shoulder, as the Hyuga walked away, Naruto pointed a finger at him, and don't think this means you can beat me in a fight, now. That first shadow clone only had half my chakra. The older boy only raised his hand in a wave, not looking back, then again, it's not like he needed to look back to see the grin on Naruto's face. So Ino, why are you here? Does the Hokage need to see me? Naruto pondered, his eyes squinting and his mouth pouting as he cocked his head to the side, Ino suddenly remembered why Shed misjudged Naruto, the look on his face was completely devoid of thought. No, Naruto, I was just wondering something, indecision seized Ino in a vice grip, Shed never bothered to ask anyone on a date, ever, that simply wasn't the way it worked, guys asked her for a date, and then she considered it, asking a guy out herself was, unprecedented, she might flirt with them, imply she wanted a date, but she never asked. Wondering what? Naruto's face was still tilted, his expression unchanging, it showed nothing of the Naruto Ino had seen in his memories, nothing of the boy smart enough to fool a Jonin ninja in a mission to the land of waves, smart enough to fool Neji, smart enough to fool dozens of other opponents, it was absolutely maddening. Well, Team 10 and I feel kind of bad that you were tricked into paying for our dinner like you did, Ino charged forward, her goal in sight, she put on her best smile, so we want to treat you to dinner to make up for it. Oh, okay. Oblivious, Eno's target agreed, she smiled to herself. Great. Well see you at 7 at Amaguri, okay? Eno asked, wincing slightly to herself. Amaguri was a relatively expensive restaurant, not the sort of place her teammates would normally frequent, of course, it would be easier to convince them to come up with excuses not to come that way, Eno's wince turned to a smile. Sure. Naruto said, confused, sure, had treated them to dinner once, but it hadn't been that expensive, even with Choji, it wasn't really that big a deal, especially compared to how much Asuma Sensei's teachings had advanced him along the path to his new jutsu. Ino disappeared almost in a flash, hurrying home to make preparations for tonight's dinner. Behind her, she left a very confused Naruto, mere hours after a bloody battle with Neji. Naruto found himself faced with a far more daunting challenge, Searching for acceptable clothing for the gathering with Team 10 at a fancy restaurant the blonde never would have set foot in normally, after Ino had asked him along he had ran into Sakura and told her that Team 10 was going to take out Team 7, Sakura was surprised but said she would track down Sai, while Naruto took a shower, he was after all a bit dirty and sweaty from that training. Of course he hadn't known that Ino had only meant to ask him not his team, he thought since all of Team 10 was going all his team was as well, it made sense to him at least. Naruto knew enough about the Amaguri that he knew he needed to dress properly. Opting for a simple, vibrantly red water country shirt had picked up while journeying with Jiraiya, Naruto nervously did up the golden-colored ties which served as the front of the shirt before pulling a pair of loose black slacks from his wardrobe, he tied the pants off at his ankles using the plain black ties, standing up to take in the effect, with the black slippers, it wasn't too bad, in fact, he looked kinda dashing, like the hero in a martial arts story had once read as a kid. He smiled at the overall effect, aside from his unruly blonde hair, an ever-defiant mass which refused to bend before the tyranny of either comb or brush, he looked every part the gentleman, with a lovely lady at his side had even passed for good company, the blonde boy fiddled with the stiff cuffs of the shirt, playing with the golden-hued pegs. Glancing in the mirror a second time, he was tempted to find something a little less refined, now that he thought about it, perhaps he was overdressed, 
he didn't want to look like an idiot if Shikamaru showed up in a chunin vest, then again, the lazy bastard managed to look cool in the outfit. Naruto dreaded the day he'd wear it. Naruto's meandering thoughts were interrupted by a knock at his apartment door, the lovely lady who would give the rest of Konoha the illusion that he was socially passable. Sorry, Naruto, Sai had something to do and couldn't make it tonight. So I guess it's just going to be the two of us with Team 10 for dinner tonight. Sakura smiled weakly, apologetic, Naruto waved off her concerns, instead focusing on the enchanting effect her refined blue dress had on her figure, it was demure, without making her look old, the blue was even a light enough shade not to clash with the pink of her hair, currently combed and curled out at the ends in a rare defiance of her vow to stop caring for her looks in preference to caring for her ninjutsu. Don't worry, Sakura-chan, Naruto said with a smile, he stepped out of his apartment, locking the door behind him with a click, pocketing his keys, he smiled at the pinkette, even if the six is reduced to five, it's fine. But, does Eno know you've invited your team with you to dinner? Sakura asked, her eyes wide, Eno had offered to pay for Naruto, not the rest of his team, some unconscious part of the green-eyed girl told her that the invitation hadn't been meant for herself or Sai, some other part yelled defiance at the first, certain coming was a good idea. It's my treat tonight, Sakura, Naruto grinned, patting the deep pockets of his black pants, the welcome bulge of Gamachan rested comfortably in the pocket, waiting to be spent, Kakazu had had quite the bounty on his own head, when he got back and Tsunade had presented him with the cash, he had been surprised, it was a nice bonus besides helping to avenge Asuma, he didn't know him as well as Team 10 but he had liked him. Dinner tonight for you is my treat, I am just happy that our two teams can sit down for a nice dinner and relax, he told her smiling brightly. Ooh having disposed of Choji and Shikamaru for the night. Ino made her way to Amaguri with a broad smile on her face, she had told them that she had plans for the night which was fine with them, Choji was working on some family jutsu training, ever since Asuma died he had been pushing himself a bit more lately, Shikamaru had just shrugged it off, saying it was fine with him, she knew that he would be too lazy to really care and was most likely just going to play shogi with his dad or something. The plan was really simple, by showing up by herself, she could just claim that Shikamaru and Choji had had other plans, which they did but might have dropped them if she told them the truth, so now she would be left alone with Naruto for the evening and would be able to work her charms on him with ease. It was the perfect plan, she couldn't know it, but walking towards Amaguri, both Naruto and Sakura sneezed. Ueno waited for her meal to arrive, glaring at her rival, the pink-haired girl, dressed in a totally gaudy, unflattering blue dress at least in her opinion sat across the small table from her, the way the golden threading of the dress was shaped, it was meant to look classy while drawing attention to the wearer's bust, why did Naruto have to invite her along? Why the hell would she even come along? She sipped her tea as she considered the evil blue-clad creature, who was giving her a smug look in turn, she knew, of course, the small smile on her face was trying to be coy about it but Sakura's entire posture screamed personal satisfaction. Sakura sipped her ice water as she idly tapped her fingers on the table, trying to smother the grin fighting its way to her face, so that's how it was, while she was pissed off that this blonde hussy would try to move in on her teammate under her nose, she was greatly satisfied that she had been lucky enough to be invited along, she knew the story about Choji and Shikamaru cancelling last minute was a lie, it was the lamest excuse to get him alone. Who did that girl think she was? Especially wearing such a skanky black dress. The low cut neckline plunged dangerously, loosely covered by translucent silk, the high cut of her dress, mid thigh, was likewise rendered decent only by the stockings, it was like she wasn't wearing anything at all. A more conservative dress like her own was far classier, the green-eyed girl concluded. They sure are taking their time with our food, Naruto commented from his position to Ino's right and Sakura's left, idly looking around the swanky restaurant, oblivious to the silent exchange taking place right in front of him, the focus of his attention was on the gnawing hunger in his belly and the pressure slightly below that. Sakura, how was work? You're looking tired tonight, Ino mentioned, smiling at the barb, subtle enough to pass unnoticed beneath the blonde boy's eyes, yet still cut the blue garb medic nin. Sakura's eyes were strained, her lower eyelids ever so slightly dark from too many late nights at the hospital, completely unlike her own well-rested eyes, unmarred by lack of sleep. I am fine, Eno, though you like you've seen a little too much sun, Sakura grinned, reveling in her own alabaster skin when compared to Eno's almost orange hue, working in the hospital like she did, she was able to maintain a nice, pale complexion allowing her pale hair to complement her pale skin, Eno's own sun-darkened hue clashed with her hair. Oh, no, this is just the result of going on too many missions recently, oh, that's right, Sakura, you're so busy at the hospital you don't really get too many missions these days, D. 
do you? Ino switched tactics, throwing her foe's lack of experience in her face. Naruto still wasn't paying attention, so she knew she could up her game. She paused, almost in thought. How is your practice going? Have you learned any new jutsu? I've learned plenty, Ino, after all. I am the primary apprentice of the Hokage herself, remember? She's been taking the time to teach me everything she knows, Sakura added with a smirk, Ino wouldn't get her based on that, being the Hokage's apprentice, she had certain advantages, like learning ninjutsu tricks so obscure most Jonin didn't know as much as she did. Hey, it'll be right back, Naruto stated, standing up and stretching before heading towards the washroom, both girls watched him briefly, waiting until he was out of hearing before they turned back to openly glare at one another abandoning the loosely veiled facade of civility. All right Ino. What's the deal? Sakura demanded, crossing her arms as she stared across the table at her friend, she gestured at Naruto's empty seat. Why are you dragging him out for a date without even telling him what it is? Jealous? Ino retorted, leaning back in her chair and sipping her tea, she stopped glaring, her eyes gazing towards Naruto's chair with a fond look which surprised Sakura. The green-eyed girl's hostility wavered. Look, Sakura. I tried to play a prank on Naruto, it backfired, I know, well, everything. Everything. Sakura asked, taken aback, not many people their age knew much about Naruto, especially the Kyubi, Shed only learned about the nine-tailed demon a couple months previously and she was the Hokage's apprentice and the boy's teammate, she paused, searching carefully for the proper words, maybe the blonde girl was bluffing, so you even know about Naruto's little problem? You mean the Kyubi? Ino asked quietly, causing Sakura to gasp, the blonde smiled to herself, satisfied that Shed surprised Sakura. The blonde leaned forward, lowering her voice to just a whisper. She had to convince the girl that she was sincere, at least. I tried to use Shintenshin no Jutsu on Naruto yesterday, Sakura, I got trapped in Naruto's mind and that monster inside him nearly killed me. She had never seen the actual demon, but Sakura did remember the four-tailed state Naruto had forced himself to go into. If that was less than half of the power of the fox unleashed she couldn't being to imagine what Ino had seen and been through. What happened, Sakura began, then stopped, leaning back speculatively, Naruto happened, obviously, which meant, what does Naruto think of this? He doesn't know, he thought it was all a dream, Ino replied, waving a hand negligently, she paused, for a moment with a sigh, look, Sakura, I am not messing with him, I am not going to play with his heart or anything, I know exactly what I am getting into with him. Yeah, but, Sakura began, stopping as Ino's eyes flickered past her shoulder, Naruto returned to his seat, a wide smile on his face, ever clueless to his surroundings, the pinkette mused that Naruto wouldn't notice anything if it wasn't trying to kill him, teach him powerful jutsu, are flavored with ramen. Dinner's still not here? Man, they're slow, Naruto crossed his arms as his eyes swept across the restaurant, searching for their server, it had been a whole ten minutes since they'd placed their order. Now now, Naruto, it isn't like they're serving ramen here, Sakura chided, her smile not quite reaching her eyes, her eyes flickered back to Ino's face, and she was forced to hide her surprise when she saw that her friend's attention was on Naruto, as if they hadn't been talking seriously just a moment ago, over Ino's shoulder, she saw dinner approaching, besides, it looks like it's done. Finally, Naruto cheered, eagerly eyeing the food, as the blonde boy dug into his meal, Ino's eyes met Sakura's over the flower arrangement in the center of the table, this wasn't over, not yet, they turned their attention to their own meals. Ooh Naruto yawned loudly as he, Ino, and Sakura walked along the side streets and back alleys of Konoha as they made their way home, while this might sound dangerous to the average person, Konoha had a remarkably low crime rate, Konoha's various ninja residents having a remarkably low tolerance for, and a judiciously high ability to deal with, the occasional back alley thug who tried to set up shop. Such men were convinced to move on and forget they'd ever thought of staying in the first place, the spirited points made by the ninja rebuking them even meant that sometimes they were able to move on under their own power instead of being slung across the shoulders of an Anbu ninja. Sakura and Ino exchanged a look as they walked, evaluating one another as they considered dinner, after the food had arrived, Naruto hadn't left the table, leaving them to spar with nothing more than veiled words and innuendo, they hadn't been able to discuss anything of substance. Naruto was, of course, oblivious to everything, they paused in front of the Yamanaka flower shop and Ino hesitated. Well, thanks for dinner, Ino-chan. Naruto stated, smiling as he faced the blonde girl, Sakura started at the implied connection in the form of address, seeing Sakura's reaction, Ino grinned and snagged Naruto in a hug, eh, hey, Ino-chan. I just wanted to thank you for coming, Naruto, and thanks for bringing Sakura along, too. It would have been weird with just the two of us, 
Eno hauled the grin back to a small smile as she pulled away from the hug, cheering internally at the shell-shocked look on the blonde boy's face. She knew she was sending a bit of a mixed message. She knew she had to take it a little slower than normal. The poor boy didn't react well to certain forms of change. If Sakura's story about the mission in Demon Country was true, he was pretty clueless when it came to women. Yeah. Almost like a date, Sakura edged in, her voice low and even. The green-eyed girl bored twin holes in the blonde boy's back. Hint hint, idiot. No way. Me and Ino chan Naruto chuckled, turning to look at his teammate, and thus missing Ino sticking out her tongue at the pink-haired girl. He shook his head, turning back to the other blonde in their trio. That's just crazy. Ino winched at that. That was pretty harsh thing to say to a girl. Okay sure he didn't know how she felt but still, ouch. Yeah. You're right, that is crazy, Sakura said, taking advantage of Naruto's turn back to lash back with a grin of her own at her old friend. The blue-eyed girl's smile barely changed, just a slight tightening of the eyes, good night, Ino. Good night, Sakura, Ino replied, entering the flower shop and closing the door behind her, as tempting as it was to follow the pair as Naruto walked Sakura to her house, the blonde girl knew Shed already pressed her luck enough for one night. Ooh, that would have been funny though, eh? Naruto pondered after a moment, walking in companionable silence with Sakura to her house, while it wasn't on the way, strictly speaking, it wasn't in the opposite direction, either. What? Sakura asked, her train of thought derailed by Naruto's sudden question. Ino and me on a date. That would have been funny, right? Naruto repeated, scratching his chin and glancing up at the stars above, he continued, not noticing the emotionless mask his companion's face was becoming at the sight of his small smile, I mean, why would a girl like Ino date a guy like me? Sakura saw the smile on his face but lately she had noticed when he was forcing those smiles out, is that was he really thought, that no woman would want to date him? Thinking back that she was the only girl he had asked out and all the rejections made her feel really bad at the moment, of course she had agreed to one when he first got back, but it hadn't been anything special, was it because of all those rejections she had given him that made him think no woman would want him, or was he afraid no one would accept him with a demon inside of him? Sakura's face turned slightly sad at the thought of Naruto all alone, she knew he had been like that as a kid, but she had been too consumed like all the girls with Sasuke to really take notice of anyone else. Looking back, Naruto had changed a lot since he was a child, he was more mature and yet kept his childlike abilities, he was sweet and kind, he was also a lot stronger than you'd expect, he knew the Rasengan and also completed it, something the fourth could never do, he always was surprising and he was never boring, the truth is, lately she had been thinking differently about him, maybe she had matured as well since his time away. Naruto you should nt think that, she told him seeing his confused face, trust me you're really a good guy, any girl would be lucky to have someone like you, so I don't ever want to hear something negative like that about you, understood. Naruto blinked a moment but then he really did smile, it felt nice hearing something like that coming from her, man, she's a lot nicer to me since we were little, I think I like this Sakura better, too bad she most likely still likes Sasuke, I will keep my promise to bring him back and we can all be together again, I just wish she liked me more. As they walked on he was rethinking that joke about dating Ino, would someone like Ino like him? She was pretty, and he always did like how her hair covered part of her face, it gave his mysterious look, she had also filled out a bit more since he had been gone and no longer wore all those bandages, was Sakura right that any girl would be lucky to have him? The door to her house arrived far too quickly for Sakura, resolving not to let Ino upstage her, Sakura hugged her teammate as well, drawing a huge blush and sputtered questions which reaffirmed her belief in his affection. As the door to her home clicked shut, she went up to her room, she sat on her bed as she though back over the last little while. Why did she wanting to keep up with Ino in this, was it because she was a bit overprotective of her teammate? That she didn't want anyone to take Naruto away again? She had missed him when he had been gone, those two and a half years seemed empty without him around, for the first few months she kept expecting to see his bright and smiling face. Or was Naruto more than just a friend? She thought long and hard about her feelings for Naruto, and she had to admit maybe she did like him, he was the perfect guy when she thought about it, she had already stated all his good points, sure he was loud, stubborn, a little naive, and maybe a bit perverted, but she liked those parts as well, that was what made Naruto, Naruto. All those times she had refused him, maybe she had been making a mistake, now Ino was moving on Naruto and it brought up all these feelings, jealousy being one of them, if Naruto was just a friend she wouldn't feel that, would she? Plus a bit of fear, fear that Naruto wouldn't be by her side anymore. If he went out with Ino that would mean less time with her and she would have missed her chance with him. She nearly laughed at how life was so strange, Ino and her had lost a friendship over chasing after a boy that didn't seem to care for either of them, 
Now after they had repaired their friendship, they were going after the same boy. Only this was the boy they had both ignored and been less than nice to as children. Sakura didn't want to repeat the mistakes of the past, she would challenge Ino again, but this time she didn't want to ruin the friendship over it. And this time she also planned to win, she already had a head start with Naruto, or did she? When was the last time he asked her for a date now that she thought about it, she quickly realized that he hadn't in a while, a slight sliver of fear entered her heart, did he stop asking because he had given up on her? If that was the case she needed to fix that as soon as possible, next day would be the first day in her battle for Naruto's heart. Meanwhile Naruto was very confused as he walked back to his place, both Ino and Sakura had hugged him, he couldn't remember girls wanting to do that to him before, both felt very nice as well, having them press up against him and wrap their arms around him, Ino smelled of jasmine he noticed while Sakura had smelt like cherries, both he had felt soft skin against him and the warmth of their bodies was really nice. Man, today has been weird but I hope they do that again, still, I wonder why they hugged me. Oh well, maybe they were just being more friendly, both have been nicer to me since I got back, maybe they just wanted to be better friends, Naruto grinned to himself at how things had changed since he was a kid, he had good friends and the village was starting to respect him now, no longer were there cold looks all around him, he actually got respect now from the village, he was on his way to accomplishing one of his goals. When Naruto finally got home he went to straight to bed and for some reason he had a strange dream that night, it started normally with him as Hokage overlooking the crowd that was cheering him on, but this time was different, now Ino and Sakura came out of the crowd, they were saying something but he couldn't make it out, then Sakura grabbed one of his arms saying something to Ino, while she grabbed his others saying something to her. The next thing he knew both girls in a tug of war with him is the rope, he woke up from the dream when both girls had ripped his arms off. He got up and looked around then made sure he had both arms, he looked at his clock to see it was still pretty late, so he got back to bed and sighed looking up at the ceiling. Oh man that was weird, it was almost like those girls were fighting over me, but that wouldn't happen in real life would it? The late night crow was flying as it cawed in the night, almost as if it was an answer to his question. Ino awoke to the shrill, persistent clanging of her alarm clock, she slapped one hand down on the bells and hammer, briefly silencing the timepiece as she struggled to awaken, with a toss of her head she flicked the blanket from her face, allowing her to glare at the evil device. Her arm was currently stretched to the limit, as long and dainty as her fingers were. She couldn't reach behind the clock and flick the switch which would let her go back to sleep, her groggy mind realized she only had two options, she could let go of the bell and hammers so that she could flick the switch off, but doing so would create more noise, her other method of attack required her to pull her arm from under her torso to reach behind the clock, either would awaken her further and would banish the possibility of going back to sleep, even briefly. Of course, that was why she bought the thing in the first place, with the groan of the damned, Eno opted to spare her parents more noise, clutching the alarm clock's noisemakers firmly with one hand and turning the switch off with the other, now sitting up in bed, Eno scowled at the clock and briefly considered hurling the thing out the window. Early morning pedestrians were spared a potential head injury as Eno set the alarm clock aside and opted instead to get ready, the Hokage had requested her presence this morning, while she wasn't Tsunade's apprentice, Eno had on occasion taken lessons from the older medic, this morning would be one of those lessons, the unusual hour was normal, as busy as the Godem was, Eno had to take whatever she was offered, be it as the sun rose or long after sun had set and the daily bustle had ended. Her morning preparations, normally filled with fluid grace and energy, were rendered wooden and sluggish by the earlier time, combined with the relative lateness of the night before, the girl was painfully aware that Shed got in far less sleep than her growing body wanted, her parents both still asleep, the girl was able to make breakfast without any light teasing from her father, smacking face first into the front door of the shop, still locked, was just another insult to the injury of rising so early. Eno stalked through Konoha's streets in the pre-dawn light just before sunrise. Making her way to the office building which housed the Hokage's office and training hall, even after all this time she still trained now and then with Sakura, but now she realized that she needed to increase that, with Asuma no longer in her life she needed to train herself, to become a stronger person, maybe she could ask for more training with Sakura and the Hokage, maybe even Shizune as the woman had to have lots of experience. Ooh Eno ducked under the fist, hearing a sharp crack as the four knuckles leading the blow broke the sound barrier, with a frightened squeal, Eno rolled under her assailant's shoulder, tagging the leg with an explosive tag and then flipping away, her assailant snagged the tag and threw it into the air, where it detonated with a light, piff, sound. You nearly got me that time, Eno. Sakura encouraged, cracking her knuckles as she glanced up at the small cloud of black smoke as it lazily drifted into the sky, Sakura's smile turned into a nasty smirk as her stance dropped low, 
and the blonde girl reflected that the pinkette was far too perky for this hour. Well, let's continue. Ino whimpered as she rolled to the side, throwing several blunted shuriken at Sakura as she desperately searched her mind for a plan. Getting up this early to dodge Sakura's attacks. It had to be sadism, Ino concluded, not to mention the added problem of being a living punching bag for the green eyed girl's frustrations after dinner last night. She wasn't a taijutsu type, she wanted to learn from Tsunade to learn medical ninjutsu, not that bizarre martial art the slug sanin used, which required insane amounts of strength. To be fair to the godem, she had begun to learn the method of building up and releasing her chakra to boost her own strength, but she was nowhere near Sakura or Tsunade's level. Think. Ino. The young blonde growled to herself as she leapt into the air, avoiding Sakura's fist as it plowed a deep trench into the ground, she allowed her hand to drop into the practice tool pouch she carried, three more dummy explosive tags, a dozen or so blunted kanai, and plenty of blunted shuriken, not much to work with, she concluded, she hurled another shuriken at Sakura, saw the pink-haired girl duck under it before she leapt up to meet Ino midair. Ino used a tree branch to deflect her jump towards the ground at the last minute, Wincing as Sakura's kick snapped off the tree limb with a sharp crack, the poor branch, having done nothing wrong, was propelled ludicrously high in the air. The blonde backed away and defended as Sakura charged in with her fists, a surge of adrenaline pulsing through her as she felt the air around her crack with the violence of Sakura's frenzied blows. Grateful for the ballet lessons her mother had forced her to attend as a child, Ino used her planted foot to leap and contort in ways Sakura thought impossible as the red clad girl's punches once again missed. The blonde girl planted her hands on the ground and tumbled away, gaining much needed distance from her melee oriented foe, she needed a plan. Then she remembered Naruto's fight with Gara. imitation was flattery and Ino knew that Sakura hadn't seen this particular trick from her prankster teammate's playbook, not yet, anyway. Wrapping a kanai handle with one of the explosive tags she had and wielding it as a close range weapon, Ino charged in, briefly surprising her foe, she ducked under a kick as Sakura responded to the unexpected move, swinging the blade up towards pink-haired girl's throat, the Hokage's apprentice neatly caught the blade between two fingers, employing her strength to halt the weapon immediately, the blonde winced as she noted how those delicate-looking fingers bent the blunted edge of the kanai. Ino pulsed her chakra once as she abandoned the weapon, planting her lead hand on Sakura's left shoulder, using the girl's frame as leverage, Ino jumped as she tried to drive her knee into her rival's jaw, Sakura tossed her head back, Avoiding the blow as she watched the blonde girl soar over her head and far out of range, Sakura didn't notice the explosive tag as it burst into flames, not until it detonated in a puff of black smoke which covered her face in black soot. Sloppy, Sakura. Ino called while still in the air, landing and not bothering to hide the smug grin, had that been a real exploding tag, the pink-haired girl would have been dead, Shed finally won a round against the Hokage's apprentice. Ino silently thanked Naruto for the tactic as Sakura wiped the soot off of her face with a gloved hand. You did well, Ino, Sakura acknowledged, pausing to smirk. Maybe next time I'll use tools as well, just so it's a little more even. Maybe next time we want forbidden ninjutsu, Ino replied with an equal smirk. Shed learned a very interesting fact which she could apply to her own family techniques and she fully intended to use it if Tsunade ever allowed them to use ninjutsu in their sparring. Naruto's apartment Naruto groaned. Feeling the heat on his eyelids as sleep left him slowly, stumbling from his mind, a cracked eye revealed the bright sun shining through a cloudless sky, still low in the sky and shining through his window to cast a bright column across the top half of his futon, he rolled over, feeling the light of the sun heat the back of his neck as he paused, clinging to the last vestige of sleep like a possessive child. After a moment's pause, he stretched, realizing it was time to get up, had promised the old lady that had dropped by and discuss Akatsuki with her. She said Shed have some free time with some of her students sparring, he glanced up at the clock, noting that he had roughly 20 minutes before he had to be at the training ground. Breakfast was shrimp ramen and what was left of the carton of milk. Slurping the second, Naruto eagerly watched his electric kettle as he waited for the water to boil so he could eat the first, with a puff of steam the appliance shrieked, and the blonde boy eagerly pulled back the top on the container, pouring in the hot water inside, within moments, had slurped down his breakfast. Dressing quickly and opting to save cleaning up for later, he shaved a few minutes off of his morning routine and was on his way with time to spare. It only took Naruto seven minutes to reach the training ground, he landed lightly beside Tsunade, looking over to see her two students were none other than Ino and Sakura, both girls sported plenty of dust and minor scrapes, the pair were currently staring directly at one another, unaware of his arrival. Hey, Granny, Naruto called, his usual cheer somewhat diminished by the relatively early hour. The blonde woman turned to him, her smile strained at the lack of respect in Naruto's form of address, she paused before turning back to the pair of her students. 
You two keep sparring. I've got to speak with Naruto, Tsunade commanded, stepping back from the pair and motioning for Naruto to follow. The boy did, idly glancing back at the two girls. Hey, Sakura, why don't we go all out this time? Ino asked, looking with a significant grin towards where the Hokage and a certain blonde were speaking, her rival smiled. Good idea, Ino, Sakura replied, pulling her gloves tight and grabbing a spare pouch of training tools, they strode in a circle, warily keeping an eye on one another, waiting for some unspoken signal, their eyes locked and they paused as a gust of wind ruffled the trees, blowing leaves in between them. Metal clashed on metal as Asakura hurled a shuriken to deflect one of Ino's kanai. The battle was on, so, you think your new jutsu worked well? Tsunade asked, eyeing Naruto with her arms crossed as she leaned against a tree, her eyes never leaving the two girls. The blue eyed boy's response was cut off by a loud yell and a localized earthquake as Sakura's fist drove into the ground, shattering the flat earth and turning it into a cloud filled crater. Ino was airborne sailing over her rival's head and throwing several shuriken to keep the pink-haired girl distracted. Five blonde girls landed and sprinted at Sakura from various directions, the Hokage's apprentice countered with five shuriken, grinning as they passed harmlessly through four clones and the remaining blonde ducked under. Say, aren't they getting a little rough for sparring? Naruto asked, his eyes tracking his teammate as she charged Ino with another punch, this one went straight through a tree, pulping wood and cracking it straight up the middle, the girl used one of the falling halves of the tree as leverage to escape a kanai hurled by Ino. Hearing no response from the other person watching the battle Naruto turned, seeing a look of stunned comprehension dawn on the medic nin's face, her jaw dropping ever so slightly, she glanced once at Naruto, then back to the fight, the corner of her mouth twitching into a bemused smile. Did they get into a fight or something? Naruto asked, pointing to the carnage, he flinched as another earthquake nearly tossed him to the ground throwing his arms above his head to protect against stray debris, do you know anything, granny? Naruto scowled as the woman chuckled, hey, hey, what's so funny, you old hag? You're an idiot, the Hokage concluded with a scowl, rolling her eyes as she turned her concentration on the fight, she gestured to where Ino was twisting out of the way of Sakura's melee blows, the blonde girl concentrating as she searched for a way of opening up space between her and her foe, you might want to watch, brat, you may even learn something. Naruto's eyes widened and he turned to watch the fight, he could always talk to the old woman later. Ooh round two, ignoring Naruto and Tsunade's intense gaze, the duet clashed, Sakura's unreasonably strong taijutsu versus Ino's acrobatic dodges as the blonde did her best to avoid broken bones and unsightly bruises, Ino knew she had to play to her advantages to win this fight, she grinned, forming the seals for Shintenshin no jutsu as she glared at her rival, Sakura flinched, flipping back and gaining the distance to dodge. It was all Ino needed, her fingers shifted from the final seal of her family's jutsu to another ninjutsu, more well known to her pink haired rival. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Though not her signature technique, it was certainly within Ino's ability to learn, she grinned as a single clone poofed into existence alongside her, ignoring the massive chakra drain as her reserves were halved. Ino grinned at the look of confusion on her foe's face, she didn't realize, even now. Ino's clone converged on Sakura, plunging in for the attack. Within meters of her foe, her clone used a simple clone, throwing Sakura into confusion by robbing her of the time needed to tell the difference between the solid clone and the illusions, forced to dodge the attacks of both types clones, Sakura was pelted several times with solid fists, she lashed out, dispersing two of the regular bunchens, receiving a ringing headache for her trouble as Ino's solid clone slammed a heel into her rival's head. Now, Ino roared, her clone grinning at her call, forming the seal for Shadow Clone and producing a dozen Shadow Clones of her own. Those clones all used clone jutsu, surrounding Sakura with a virtual army of Inos, again they rushed the pink-haired girl, who was pelted with dozens of punches and kicks as she tried to defend against the onslaught, trained to deal with only a small number of foes, Sakura could do nothing but stumble from one attack to the next, collecting bruises and other minor injuries as she avoided the worst of the attacks. Nice, Sakura, Ino called, her clones echoing her words, the feeling of a small army buoying her words, the blonde girl understood the orange-clad boy's desire to gloat while he sat back and watched his army pummel his foe, she had just over a dozen clones under her command, and the feeling was intoxicating, you've watched Naruto fight often enough, don't tell me you can't deal with shadow clones. Thinking about the stories Ino had heard from Sakura and Shikamaru, she couldn't imagine commanding thousands of disposable warriors, all at level of taijutsu higher than her own, with one jutsu, she commanded a small force of ninja capable of putting her rival purely on the defensive, at the same twitch of his fingers, Naruto wielded an army, 
each of which was nearly as good as Neji at Taijutsu. No wonder the boy was sometimes arrogant, who needed to be humble when they had an army in reserve whenever they needed it. But she didn't have the stamina to keep this up, already she was feeling the drain, if she didn't finish this soon she would collapse. Clever, Ino. Sakura called, shoving her hand into her tool pouch and producing a handful of kanai and shuriken. The smile on the green eyed girl's face only broadened as she took in the army by which she was surrounded, but, let me show you why Naruto is the only one capable of using that technique against Junin level ninja. With those words, Sakura hurled her ninja tools in circle around herself, throwing her arms in front of her face and dodging. Ino could only watch as all of her clones were dispersed in a single attack. See, Naruto's use of shadow clones is special, it's a style of attack only he can use, Sakura commented, grinning as Ino stood. Alone now in the woods, she waved her hands around. Naruto can call hundreds of clones to his side as he needs them, the loss of a few clones doesn't bother him at all, because creating more is child's play, his army is infinite, I can tell from the look on your face, yours is not. Sakura cracked her knuckles, stretching her arms, then, with a sharp thrust which cracked the ground beneath her feet, she launched herself at Ino, the blonde rolled underneath the kick, planting her hands and channeling her chakra just so, sticking briefly, she was able to plant her feet and flip backwards, soaring over Sakura's head as the pink-haired girl spun around. Confused, Sakura was unprepared for the sweep kick which robbed her of her footing, she found herself falling chest first onto a blunted kanai held up by her foe, only by planting her arms and channeling chakra in a burst was Sakura able to stop her downward momentum, she rolled to her right, avoiding Ino's blade as the blonde girl slashed in her direction. Both girls clashed one last time, Ino regaining her feet and dipping her hands into her tool pouch as she performed a palm strike to Sakura's solar plexus, Sakura ignored the blow, her own punch far more effective as she slammed her fist into Ino's jaw, perhaps not at full strength, but close enough, the blonde skipped along the ground like a flat stone hurled over the surface of the water, finally caught by Naruto before she struck a tree. Boom, Ino commented firmly as her eyes met Naruto's, grinning as consciousness fled, Naruto looked up to see three explosive tags slapped onto Sakura's body detonate into puffs of smoke, bewildered, his own mind ran back to his fight with Gara. years ago, it was the same tactic, distract your foe long enough to trade strikes, then let them hit you with a stronger taijutsu attack than you could hit back with, then they get blown to hell while they are reveling in their victory. It was exactly the same, right down to the word on Ino's lips as it worked, Naruto gazed down at the unconscious girl's face in wonderment. So, it's a draw then, Tsunade commented, her eyes narrowing as she watched Sakura approach, she wagged one finger at her apprentice, I am surprised Sakura, Ino beat you one and now a draw, even if her teacher was the third son, that doesn't excuse how sloppy you were in losing to explosive tags twice in a row. You'll have to double your taijutsu training. Why technically a draw? Naruto asked, because if this was real fight, then Sakura's punch would have taken Ino's head off with that kind of punch it's only because Sakura wasn't hitting at full power that Ino wasn't killed, Tsunade explained. Oh that makes sense, Naruto said mainly to himself. Ooh, oi, old woman, why do I have to carry Ino? Naruto demanded, shifting the blonde girl's limp weight on his shoulders, her arms dangled limply on each side of his neck, and the blonde boy was very firmly trying not to think about how his hands were supporting her weight. Walking back from the training ground at a more sedate pace than had arrived, Naruto couldn't help but be annoyed, had been called out for a quick talk, and here he was doing all the work. Isn't it obvious? The Hokage countered, shaking her head, even if it's not too much, Sakura is injured from her battle with Ino, and I am the Hokage, that leaves you as the only one to transport Ino, Naruto. I guess, Naruto muttered, paused and shifting Ino's weight so that it was easier to carry, he still thought the reasoning was suspect, though accepted the burden in the end, it wasn't like the girl was heavy, they journeyed in comparative silence, Naruto silently plodding along as Sakura and Tsunade spoke quietly. Eventually they reached Konoha proper. Naruto, you can take Ino back to her house, the Hokage announced, gesturing down the road, Sakura and I will be at the hospital, attending to our duties, after you drop Ino off at her home come to the hospital so we can finish our conversation, Naruto, and tell that girl she's not allowed to get out of bed for the rest of the day. Sakura appeared to be on the verge of arguing but held her tongue, shooting a glare at the unconscious girl on Naruto's shoulders, the blonde boy cocked his head at this, wondering, nothing came to him as he examined the Hokage's grin and his teammate's scowl, so he merely leapt to the rooftops and made his way to his burden's home, making just a brief stop on the way. Ooh, Ino was slow to awaken, 
her mind feeling as sluggish as if it were trapped in sticky mud, a jumble of images, her fighting Sakura, crept at the edge of comprehension, ending with soft blue eyes and a concerned face. Clearly Sakura's last punch had packed a fair amount of force, a suspicion confirmed by the lucidity brought about by the sharp lightning strike of pain as she moved her head. She kept her eyes closed, focusing on her other senses, something soft and comforting underneath her, almost as if she were sleeping in her own bed, the light sound of someone else breathing, just off to her left, the smell of clean sweat mingled with the comforting smell of mingled evergreen needles and seasonal tree leaves, the tangy copper of dried blood, welling from a sharp throbbing on the inside of her lower lip. Her eyes opened to a dark blur, before her vision brightened into focus on the infuriating sight of Naruto, her vision sharpened more to reveal that she was, in fact, in her room, Naruto sat in the chair normally resting in front of her desk, a tray holding a steaming pot of tea and an empty cup resting on her night table. Hey, you're awake, Naruto's loud voice chimed, doing no favors for her headache. Ino felt the urge to scream at him for the lack of caution in dealing with someone who probably had a concussion, let alone for the invasion of privacy, but she didn't have the heart to voice anything against the youth's broad grin. It was infectious enough for Ino to match, split lip and all, she winced as she levered herself up, consciousness swimming and making her feel as if she was swaying, the gentle, firm hand of Naruto's hand on her shoulder, keeping her from tumbling gracelessly onto his lap, proved it to be more than just a feeling. So, I lost. Ino finally queried, struggling to balance her upright body, she got her elbows planted and managed to keep steady in a graceless slouch, the position was poor for her posture and put a decided lack of emphasis on the parts she wanted to draw Naruto's attention to, but the grey-eyed Yamanaka lacked the energy to do more. No it was a draw but you won the first one so that means you came out ahead. Naruto assured her, grinning as he rubbed his jaw, releasing his hand from her shoulder, he raised his index finger in the air unconsciously mimicking their academy teacher as he continued, Granny Tsunade said that the explosive tags would have killed Sakura if this was real, but that Sakura's punch would have killed you as well since you were knocked out by it. She thought about that, she was happy with the win and the draw was okay, for too long Sakura won their little training matches and it felt nice to get ahead, but she knew it would be harder next time, Sakura wouldn't fall for the same trick twice, plus she wouldn't have her guard down again, Ino knew she would have to fight even harder to beat down the pink-haired girl but maybe she was finally catching up to her rival after all this time. I think he'll avoid winning like that in the future. The blonde admitted ruefully, feeling the ache in her jaw as she rubbed her chin, she scarcely remembered the beginning of the fight with Sakura, let alone the conclusion, despite her efforts to the contrary, the jumbled images remained a chaotic montage with no order or flow, her eyes met the youth watching her intently and she managed another smile, fake explosive tags leave Sakura covered in soot, but you can't really fake a knockout punch. That's why you should focus on taijutsu, Naruto smirked, clenching his fist, he threw a jab to his left and thumbed his nose, it's better to be the one clobbering someone out than being the one clobbered, it's not like you'll ever find yourself in a situation where being able to fight well will hinder you. I'll admit that my skills are a little weak, Ino admitted, as much to herself as the orange clad genin at her side, she smiled and lowered her voice just a touch, adding, maybe you can help me learn some grappling. Sure, Naruto agreed. The blonde girl reflected that perhaps that clueless nature of his had its positive sides, it would certainly present her with opportunities the likes of which few people ever offered, just like an opponent who charges into an ambush without noticing the sprung traps, Naruto gave Ino a thumbs up, the only guy who's better than me is bushy brows and I don't think you want your hands all battered and bruised. Certainly not, though that green outfit would probably look alright on me, wouldn't it? Ino's stare and the cast of her smirk were, perhaps, direct enough to pierce the wall of obliviousness surrounding Naruto, however briefly, after a moment of dawning comprehension, the boy blushed bright red and directed his eyes elsewhere while the silver-eyed girl chuckled. Anyway, Naruto coughed, his eyes not quite meeting the injured Kunoichi as he stood, he strode to her open window, planting a foot on the sill, I've got to get back to the old lady and see what she wants, I'll talk to you later, okay? See you later, Naruto, Ino said with a nod keeping her eyes on billowing curtains of her window even after the loud shinobi had departed. She had certainly made progress, perhaps even clued the boy into her intentions, though she wouldn't be banking on that sort of miracle, what little perception the perpetual genin possessed seemed to be focused on fighting or training, in a lot of ways, he was still the same naive little boy had been when he graduated from the academy, perhaps that was the reason everyone who knew him had such faith in him, he was, in some ways, too pure for any serious guile or deception. 
Her introspection was interrupted by her mother's quiet cough at the door. One of her mother's delicate fingers flicked towards the flowers sitting in a plain-looking vase. The florist in Eno groaned at an arrangement of undying passion, fervent devotion, and, embarrassingly enough, unquestioned fidelity. When the breeze shifted and the tea reeked of ginseng, Eno was left to ponder the depths of Naruto's ignorance and the astounding amount of trouble it could cause. He saw some tea for revitalizing energy and a handful of pretty flowers. Her mother, her teacher in both Ikebana and her Balaji, saw something decidedly less innocent and alarming more adult. Eno, do we need to have a talk? Though phrased as a question, the blonde girl knew it was instead a statement of fact, as her mother sat on the edge of her bed with a stern look, searching for words, Eno was left to wonder just what sort of retribution the blonde genin was due for the long, embarrassing discussion she was about to have. Ooh, Sakura was, for the first time in a great many years, experiencing an emotion so long absent from her life that it felt alien, this emotion wasn't anything pleasant, that she knew right away, but it took her nearly half the walk to the hospital to finally identify it. She was jealous, or perhaps even envious, of Eno. It had been a long time since Shed last felt it, around the time that she and Eno both discovered they had a crush on Sasuke, it was on that day, so long ago, that the pink tressed girl decided to push away jealousy and envy. Shed grabbed those feelings and buried them somewhere deep and dark, somewhere she thought Shed never see them again. She thought she never would, given how amiable their relationship became after that first Chunin exam. The years since they'd rekindled their relationship had, Shed assumed, been an ample test of that resolve, not once in the three years since they'd resumed being friends, had she ever wished she were Eno, wished that the blonde girl and her own role were reversed, perhaps with Sasuke gone that resolve had never really been tested, but she was sure she was completely beyond it. Yet seeing the blonde girl smile while her head rested gently against Naruto's on the walk back from their sparring match, Sakura finally understood it was jealousy causing that uneasy feeling in her gut, she knew that she didn't want to repeat the same mistakes of the past but she couldn't help feel what she felt seeing them like that. Sakura, even with my lousy record for gambling, I bet you're wondering why I ordered Naruto to take Ino home, Tsunade's statement could have been a thought plucked from the green-eyed girl's mind, and her slack-jawed amazement told the Sanin as much. She smiled, I can understand your confusion, Sakura. They walked in silence for a moment, amusement and confused amazement, Sakura's mind finally put words to the question her heart begged to ask. Well, if you don't mind telling me, why did you? Sakura finally asked, carefully keeping her voice neutral. It's actually very simple, Sakura, Tsunade explained, shrugging her shoulders, despite her casual gesture, the slug summoner refused to meet her apprentice's eyes, Eno seems to have an interest in Naruto, I think they might be good for one another. But, but Naruto has always had a crush on you, and who am I to interfere with his affection for you? Tsunade interrupted and then continued before the girl could answer the question, Sakura, no man's heart is a toy, seeing that girl's interest beside your own lack thereof, I have no reason whatsoever not to help Eno, you have to face the fact that he might not always be there when you decide that you're ready. I know that now, Sakura admitted softly to herself. She knew that she had pushed Naruto's affection to just friendship for a very long time, in fact she was worried maybe for too long she had done that, only Tsunade couldn't have known that Sakura had started to see Naruto as more than just a friend, but she wanted to see what else her mentor had to say before she spoke up again. Crossing a bridge away from the crowds, Tsunade stopped suddenly, she walked to the railing to watch the river flowing underneath, seeming to draw a measure of calm from the placid, gentle flow of water, when she spoke it held no heat, only remorse. Sakura, I don't want to see you waste your life hiding behind a wall of excuses. Neither do I want Naruto to spend his life waiting until you tear those walls down. If you're not prepared to fight for him, you have no excuse to be angry if someone else is. Despite the blonde woman's gentle words, the splinter of the wooden railing beneath her deceptively gentle hand showed a lack of control the red-clad Chunin had rarely seen in her teacher. The sad eyes met Sakura's own, and the young girl was amazed at the depth of pain she saw. The way you've modeled yourself after me is a great compliment. Sakura, please, don't take it so far that you repeat my mistakes. Moments stretched into an eternity and Sakura finally recognized the fragile woman beneath the gruff exterior. Despite the smooth, unmarred surface she showed the world, this was a woman who had flaws which could unmake her with the slightest pressure. Sakura now saw the woman who had had to rely on a genin for protection the woman who had lost one love to death, but there was something more as well something other than the death of Dan. She knew of Dan, from Shizun as the older woman had talked about her relative during Sakura's training, 
She could only imagine the pain that caused both Shizune and Tsunade but there was something more to this, like Tsunade was speaking about another love that she had only this one she had let slip. Sakura suddenly thought of Jiraiya, was this history repeating itself? Did her mentor have feelings for her own teammate but had ignored them all this time like Sakura had? Tsunade, I've got too much respect for you not to model myself after you in any way I can, Sakura finally admitted, flashing her teacher a small smile. She risked placing a gentle hand on one shoulder, I guess that means you'll have to do what you can to fix your own mistakes so I don't make the same ones, right? But, there's been too much since then. Tsunade's voice was close to panic. Like a hungry predator, Sakura pounced on it feeling she knew she was on the right track. You're the one telling me that it's not worth repeating mistakes, Tsunade-chan. Sakura's grin was just as smug as the strange honorific, and restored some of the fire she was so used to seeing in her idol's eyes. Besides, you're the one who keeps telling me that no matter what, you can't give up, why give up now that you've gained so much wisdom? And I am supposed to be the teacher, Tsunade finally growled, spinning to lean back against the railing, she flashed a smile to Sakura, and the green-eyed girl saw a serenity she would have rarely associated with Konoha's fifth Hokage, then the older woman jabbed Sakura's solar plexus with a scowl which didn't reach the smile in her eyes, that doesn't let you off the hook, girl. You've still got to make a decision about the blonde brat, you know. Actually I made a decision last night, Sakura admitted, I just don't want to ruin my friendship with Ino this time around but I will fight for him. Naruto has always been close to me and very good for me as well, I want to give him the same kind of happiness that he's given me. In the three years they'd shared, neither the young girl or the mature woman were as close to one another as they were then, their shared grins reflected a camaraderie which went beyond the bonds of a teacher and student. They were close friends with a similar pain and unconquerable struggle, finally released from the solitude of their emotional trap in mutual enlightenment. Despite all that she had learned from the woman in the past and all the moments they would share in the future, both knew that this strange honesty on the bridge would be the defining moment of their relationship. Naruto was just walking aimlessly through the streets he had already had his talk with Tsunade, so far they hadn't come up with anything new against Akatsuki. Jiraiya was on his way to give a report on anything he could have come up with and maybe even train Naruto for a bit as well, Naruto was looking forward to that, but there was something else on his mind lately and that was the sparring he had seen between Ino and Sakura. He had seen Sakura fight many times, she was always amazing, hell she did beat that puppet guy from Akatsuki, but Ino had surprised him he hadn't really seen her fight since the Chunin exams against Sakura all those years ago, Tsunade still wasn't any help when he has asked about that. She just smirked at him and shook her head, saying that she wasn't going to get in the middle of that. Naruto hated it when people talked about things he didn't understand without explaining it. It was just so frustrating, at any rate that was what led him to this point. He was starting to think that maybe he should just put his free time to some use with some more training, that spar with Neji had been fun but he still felt he could get stronger, he had to get stronger, he couldn't relay on the power of the fox anymore like he had when he was a kid. He had to use his own power now and not borrow from the damn fox, already it had caused him to hurt Sakura, his face fell remembering that. Although he didn't remember what happened when he entered the fox cage, he did remember when he was told how Sakura had gotten that injury on her arm, it was then that he had to use his own strength first Jiraiya had been hurt maybe even nearly killed and now Sakura, he was hurting those closest to him with that power, so now he thought about different ways to improve. He could try to do the chakra concentration exercises to help him with his control, but he never did have the patience for it, he would most likely just make an army and pass out when he was finished, maybe he could track down Lee and ask for weights to increase his speed. That could work although it could take a while for him to build up to the kind of speed he needed, he didn't really know any weapons he could train in other than the usual stuff he carried and the only weapon user he knew was Tenten, she could be nice but she could only teach him at her level, so no shadow clones at least not too many. Plus what kind of weapon would he even bother to train with? So he put that idea aside and tried to think of more. Genjutsu was out as he just royally sucked at it he honestly had no talent at all for it so he just skipped it. He might want to look up more wind style jutsus, that was one possibility. Maybe he could track down Kakashi, he might know where he could get some more, he had decent control over his wind chakra now, another possibility was trying to find a way to safely use the Resenshuriken but if Sakura or Tsunade found out they wouldn't be too happy with him, he was supposed to be forbidden to even use it, which really sucked for him, all that time making such a kick-ass move and what happens after he uses it to wipe the floor with that weird Akatsuki. 
Turns out he can't use it because it would ruin his ninja career. Oh well, it wasn't like he didn't know adversity in life, it was just another thing to overcome. While Naruto was on his wonderings a familiar person had seen him. This was none other than Jiraiya himself the toad sage and master for Naruto. He had been on his way to see Suan when he saw his apprentice, he always did like Naruto, he was a perfect blend of his parents and over those two and a half years, he had enjoyed the time with the boy, it reminded him of another time, with three other youths back in rain, he wondered what became of them, he had looked into it, but the three just seemed to have disappeared, that worried him but he had faith that they were okay. He decided to talk with his latest student, besides he was still early and he wanted to check in on him. Hey Naruto. Naruto looked over to who had called him and he broke out into a smile, Aero Senen. The older man sighed, when will you ever stop calling me that? When you stop being such a pervert, he grinned crossing his arms. I told you that I am not a pervert, I am a super pervert. He yelled in his face totally forgetting that they were out in public, many stopped to give strange and shocked looks, the women also took several steps away from Jiraiya as well. Anyways when did you get back? Naruto asked him. Just now, he said smiling at the boy, so how have things been? Heard that you came up with something new while I was gone. Naruto got a huge grin on his face, yeah I completed the Rasengan. I put my wind charka into it and came up with this killer move. Jiraiya laughed as he clapped the boy on his back, that's my student. It took Minato years to just make the Rasengan but you managed to finish what he started in no time. Yeah. Kakashi sensei came up with his major training using a lot of shadow clones. Ah, so that's how he did manage to get you to pull it off in such a short time. Jiraiya thought about that, it made sense as Naruto used shadow clones like people wore shoes. He might be the only person to be a true master of that jutsu, with each clone gaining experience it would cut the training down from years to days, the only reason he hadn't bothered to try that while on the training trip, was that the kid just wasn't ready for that kind of training. It was very harsh and no one but him could pull it off and live, but now that he could train that way, there was no telling what he could pull off in the future. Hey, Aero Senen can I as you something? Naruto said a little more serious but also looking slightly nervous. Sure what is it? Well it's just that Sakura-chan and Ino-chan have been acting strange lately, Naruto said. Jiraiya lifted an eyebrow at the last part, as far as he knew the Sakura girl was the only girl that he used the Chan at the end of the name. Had something been going on lately, his pervert sense started to tingle as he felt something really good was going on in the village, he grinned as he looked at the young man. Eno chan huh, I thought you liked the little pink-haired girl only, have you given up or are you making a move on someone else? I it's not like that, Naruto said although he did blush bright red, she's just been really nice to me lately. Nice how, Naruto went on about how she had offered to treat his team but only Sakura could make it. Also how her teammates seemed to have been busy, Jiraiya couldn't believe how the boy could miss obvious signs like that, he had tried to teach him about women on the trip, but he had always been more interested in jutsus and less than, ways of the perverted hermit as he called it, if the boy had he might have known exactly what was going on, but there had to be something else going on as well. He asked what else was going on with them and he explained the training he saw, and how for some strange reason the girls were going all out suddenly when they knew he and Tsunade were there. He had asked Tsunade but she hadn't told him a thing, Jiraiya however could see what was going on, the boy now had the girl he had pinned after for years interested, but also it would seem another girl had entered into the race for his heart, he chuckled to himself at how lucky the boy was, having two such women would be any mon's dream. Naruto let me give you some advice on women, he said as they walked on, first off, no man, not even me, will ever truly understand them, they had their own rules and way of thinking, you can get some of them but only a woman can truly understand another woman I fear, but there are a few things that you should remember about them. First off if they find something they really want they will fight to the death for it sometimes, trust me I've seen how competitive they can get, they say males are territorial but we don't hold a candle to women defending what they think is theirs, another thing is that a woman is known to change her mind, like as she likes some boy shall go after him. Naruto sighed and nodded, remembering how all the girls had been like back in school with Sasuke, even Sakura. But like I said, they have been known to change their minds and they could decide they like another boy. Really, so, you think that say one day, a girl that likes one boy for a long time might, like another that she didn't like for a while. Jiraiya could see what he was getting to, yeah that can happen, but also be prepared, 
Maybe a girl you never once considered before might like you and decides to want you. That made Naruto blush, why you really think so? But how will I know if a girl likes me? The Toad Sage sighed, he really wished Naruto had paid attention when he tried to teach him about women more, there are a few signs, one is that they make meals for you, want to spend time with you, they smile or blush a lot, maybe even a little nervous, they might even try to be more physical with you. P physical, Naruto gulped and grinned at the images that gave him. Jiraiya chuckled as he saw that, maybe there was hope for his apprentice after all. Hokage's office, Tsunade was having a hard time at the moment. It had nothing to do with reports those were finally finished thank god, or any political problems on the rise, in fact it wasn't even something to do with her job as Hokage but more as a woman, her talk with Sakura had been making her think on her own past, she wondered when it was that she had fallen for the old pervert, sure he was a major pervert and wrote those adult books but what little people knew what that, it was those books that opened her eyes. It all started years ago, while she had been running away from her pain after Dan's death that she had seen one of Jiraiya's books. She knew the kinds of stuff that were in it, but maybe out of boredom or maybe just curiosity she bought one. Of course she wasn't surprised by the smut in it, she was surprised by the plot between two of the characters. One character was a man that had fallen madly in love with his teammate, of course the girl blew him off but he kept on trying, she had read how he would always be there for her and how when she hurt, he hurt as well, how torn up he had been when their other teammate betrayed them how he had wanted to die when the woman he had loved for years chose another man without even giving him a chance. But he stayed by her side, always happy to see her happy, but always in pain because he couldn't be the one that could make her that happy, then when her lover was killed and she had gone into a deep depression, he had tried to help but she closed him off. She had gone through half the first book until she realized he had been using his own life to write the books, Orochimaru had been the betrayer, he was the man that had longed to be loved by the woman he cared for and she was the woman, to actually read the words he put into them, she had been surprised by them, they had been so deep that she felt bad for giving him such pain, but the next time she had seen him, years had passed and she thought that maybe too much time had gone by. But was it too late? Tsunade was waiting for Jiraiya to make a report to her but she felt strange, she hadn't felt like this since she was a young woman with Dan, this anticipation in her chest, why was she nervous, she knew the old man still had a thing for her, or was it just an act? He had acted like that for as long as she had known him, hell the first day he had made a lame pass at her, plus even in his fifties he kept in great shape, but she used a genjutsu to hide her real age, how would he react to her real face? Was he in love with the woman, or just in lust with the illusion? It was then that she noticed his presence, at her window no less, can't you come in through the door like a normal person? She didn't see his face with her back to him but she knew he was giving that smile of his, nah, that's not for me why be like everyone else? She turned to face him as she sat down on her chair, so I take it that you've gotten some information. He shrugged as they both got into more serious nature they both knew when they had to take things seriously, well they seem to be more active as of late, not sure why though, for years they've kept to the shadows but they are more active than ever, they seem to nearly have them all now soon they'll come after Naruto. Tsunade felt a stab of fear into her heart at that, how long? Honestly it's hard to tell, he sighed as he grossed his arms, it might be soon, but there is more, I've heard rumors that they might have something to with the hidden rain, I am thinking of checking it out, plus there is something else I want to check on as well. Tsunade had to smile a little as she had a guess, going to try and find those three kids again. I know most would have given them up for dead, he said as he looked out over the village, but you don't know those kids like I knew them, I trained them and although I wish I could have taken them back with me, I know that they have to still be out there. You always were so very caring to others I don't know why you insist on making people think you're just some perverted writer all the time. He grinned at her, hey don't go spoiling that, I spent years to get that reputation, besides if people expect me to be just that then they won't expect my real skills, plus I am a pervert. She rolled her eyes, he always seemed so very proud of that. Then again, that was one of the things she did like about him. He wasn't afraid to show the world who he was, she hadn't let her genjutsu drop in years so she couldn't say the same, but still, he made her smile with his antics he always did in fact even when she shouted at him or had to punish him for being too perverted with her, she had always enjoyed their time together, it had been when he had gone away for those years to take care of those three war orphans that she had started to miss him. Those had been lonely times and it was also when she had met Dan, maybe if he hadn't left, would she had still fallen for him.
Dan had been important to her, but Jiraiya had always been there in some way. Well if that's all I could use a drink, I've had a long day and I could use some time to relax, Tsunade said as she stretched her arms up to get the kinks out, also she gave Jiraiya a subtle little thrill to see what his reaction would be, she held off the smirk as she saw him stare and gulp a bit as her very impressive bust was pushed together, the slight blood from his nose that he quickly wiped away made her know that he was still at least physically attracted to her. You wouldn't happen to want the company of a handsome man would you? He grinned at her he was prepared for the usual she would do, she would give him a glare, or maybe even punch him, the truth was that he always found her sexy when she was angry, why else would he get her railed up all the time, well that and it was fun. She surprised him though by doing something he had never expected, she gave him a small smile and for a minute there, he thought he caught something in her eye that was anything but anger, it was gone before he could fully see it but something was off here. Sure, I would like that, I keep the good stuff at my place, I usually have to drink there as having the great Hokage drunk in public I am told, is bad for my image, she snorted at that last part, she was a heavy drinking gambler, the fact that people chose to ignore it she just didn't understand, she paused when she noticed that he wasn't following her and looked over her shoulder. Are you coming or not? Jiraiya had been frozen as something amazing was happening, the girl he had chased after for most of his life not only didn't hit him for making another half-assed pass but was inviting him, to her home, to drink. What that could lead to wasn't lost on him, hell he had so many fantasies that some of them even started out this way, something was going on here though, he wasn't going to get his hopes up, at least not just yet but he would play this out, after all, it was the hope that one day she would accept his feelings for her as genuine and give them back, that had make him last this long. Anyways what's this I hear with Naruto and a couple of girls? He asked as they left. Tsunade laughed, he'll explain while we get the drinks. Jiraiya lifted an eyebrow at this, maybe there's more going on in the village than just Naruto and those two girls, I think he'll put off my trek into rain, just for a bit at least, he thought as he couldn't help was look at her ass as she swayed her hips while walking, he got a perverted grin on his face, if things shaped up maybe he could put off leaving just yet. Eno, after a very long and embarrassing talk with her mother, Eno took a some light bills for the pain in her jaw while applying the basic medical skills she had to heal her jaw, there was still some discoloration but it was only a little and the swelling and pain was lessened a lot as well, now it was just a matter of going to find Naruto again, she had to admit that it was very kind of him to put her in her own bed like that, some would only just drop her off with her family but he always went that little extra mile. She sat on her bed as she thought about how things could have been different if she had known now. What she had known as a young girl, if she had gone after Naruto instead of Sasuke, she started to list how things could have been different, she would have had a boy that would have been fun to hang out with, very kind, and she had a feeling that if Naruto ever got a girlfriend, he would make sure she was looked after she also wouldn't have wasted years chasing Sasuke, which was all for nothing after he left the village. She groaned as she flopped back onto her bed, she and Sakura had wasted so much time and energy on that boy, and not once had he even noticed them, they had spent time chasing after Sasuke that they both could have used training, as a result she had passes with average scores, the only reason Sakura was ahead was that she was smarter with the book stuff, looking at her skills now, she could only laugh at her younger self. But she was getting off topic she went back to listing the things that would have been different, for one, without chasing after Sasuke she wouldn't have lost Sakura, they would have remained friends all these years, plus if she had gotten him in the past, the current little rivalry wouldn't be going on as well. Well that was one thing that she had learned while growing up, you can't change the past only learn from it, it took Asuma's death to really get her thinking on her life and improving, maybe if she had Sakura's medical skills she could have saved him but because she only took the basic courses, no, she didn't want to go down that road again, she kept coming back to that, and she knew that Shikamaru felt even more responsible. She sighed as she starting to think about how to make Naruto to notice her more, so far the tricking him into a date hadn't worked, maybe she should just be more upfront. On second thought he never did respond well to women that came on too strong, she needed a more subtle approach, plus he still held a torch for Sakura, she needed to make him feel interested in her in order to make him consider going out with her until she could do something like that, then asking him out, he might actually turn it down. Now, the first part was how to get a boy to notice you, she thought about Naruto and the kind of boy he was and what might work for her, it took her some time but she had remembered that Naruto did offer to help her with her fighting and grappling, a smirk came onto her face at that, with grappling and in such closer quarters maybe she could both learn something and make him take notice of her, 
After all, accidents did happen and maybe they would even talk and get to know each other more. As the plan formed she felt better to be able to travel, she needed to make sure that Naruto had the day off tomorrow for some training that he offered. Sakura. Sakura sighed as she got out of her shower. She had cleaned up after her training with Ino had left a major mess. Already her mother had been washing her clothing for her. So she was glad for that, although her mother had gotten used to cleaning Sakura's clothing when she became a ninja, it wasn't easy to find ways to get things like soot, dirt that had been worn for days while on a mission, to even blood, her mother hated it when there was blood, she had always been afraid since Sakura started to train as a ninja as a little girl, it had lessened since then but Sakura could still tell her parents were afraid for her at times. They were merchants by trade, but Sakura never had interests in that. She had wanted something different in her life and living in a ninja village, you either became a civilian or ninja, so it was only logical for her to become the first ninja in her family, despite the underlying fear, her parents were also so very proud of her, she remembered when she made Chunin her parents had taken her out to dinner and said how much she had grown, when she became the apprentice to the Hokage herself, her parents had told her that they were very proud of her. But now she had another thing to think on, and that was Naruto, she needed to do something for him, after all the things they had been through and to make up for when she had been younger, she had spent the shower thinking long and hard on it. She started to think about Naruto and tried to think of something that would really mean something to him. She could just take him out for ramen but there were two problems with that, it was more of a friendship gesture and also her poor savings would feel it, how he managed to eat so much and not be poor all the time she had no idea, then again she had a feeling that the people running his favorite place gave him a discount, with all the ramen he ate there, they had to make up for it plus they liked him as well. She smiled thinking about how happy he always was to go there, and then the smile fell as it came to her, that was most likely because they were the only people who cooked for him, he never had parents who would take care of him when he was little, reminded of that only made her feel a bit of sadness of how lonely his life had to have been, she had known loneliness herself before Ino came into her life, she sighed as she put on some clothing she wore while off duty. A knock came on her door, yes, I got your clothing is it okay to come in? Her mother asked. Sure come on in, Sakura said as her door opened up, in walked Sake Haruno, she was an average looking woman with the exception of the long pink hair as this was where Sakura got her hair color from. Her mother's hair had faded a bit with age but not too much, also her mother had cream colored skin and brown eyes, she was just starting to get a couple of lines on her eyes as she spent a lot of time squinting in her life to read small prints and examine items for damage. I don't know what you did to this but please don't do it too often, her mother smiled as she put her clean clothing away, if it was on there any deeper I wouldn't have gotten the stains out. Thanks mom, training just got a little intense today, Sakura told her mother, hey mom, I am trying to think of something nice to do for a friend but I can't really think of something. Oh, who is it for dear? For my teammate Naruto. Oh Naruto huh, you know I wish you would bring your team around just once, all these years and you never once brought them, your father and I only met your team sensei on the day he came to ask about you on your first day. Wait, Kakashi sensei was here. Sakura had never heard of this before. Yes he did. He said that he was going around to meet the families of his new genins while you weren't home, didn't he tell you? Sake asked a little confused. Sakura should have known that Kakashi was looking up on them when they had first formed Team 7, or at least she wasn't surprised by this, and that had to have been a lie. As Naruto and Sasuke had no family at that point, suddenly an idea came to Sakura. Naruto had never had a family home cooked meal in his life she bet, this was the perfect thing to give Naruto, plus she had never invited him over before. Actually mom you gave me an idea, you think I can invite Naruto over for dinner? Sake thought about it, she had only heard things about Naruto. At first they hadn't been too good so she had been a little worried, but then things people said had changed and she had wanted to meet him, but Sakura said that they either had missions and by the time things settled down, the boy had gone off for over two years, Sakura had been so depressed about that for the first few months, she had been wondering if maybe her daughter had feelings for the boy she once asked but had stated that she only cared for him as a friend. Now maybe she wasn't so sure anymore, the boy had come back and he seemed very popular lately, also now her daughter wanted to bring a boy home to dinner. She smiled wondering if maybe her daughter had moved from her feelings for the Uchiha boy to her other teammate, she was interested to actually meet the boy in person. I don't think that will be an issue, it'll just make a little more for tomorrow, I don't have enough for extra tonight but tomorrow should be no problem, 
Besides your father will be working late tonight and I think I want him here if we have company, Sake smiled. Sakura was delighted for this, thanks mom, I think I'll go find Naruto and tell him, Sakura hugged her mother before running off. Sake just smiled as she watched her daughter go, there was obviously something going on as she had been like that with Sakura's father Motatsugu when she had been that age. Thanks for watching.